All right, here we go. Showtime. Oh, cricket stop just in time for the show. Oh, yeah, that was nice, keep man. it that way. <laughs> Attention. The movie guys love movies. <laughs> Any comments about a foreign born virus that we thought was gone for good but now threatens American life as we know it are purely for entertainment purposes only. Isn't that right, Bieber Fever? <laughs> We I am breaking out in a sweat now. Thank you. Are, you, are, are you getting a little feverish? Is that still a thing, Bieber fever? Has he been arrested too many times now? People may, may not care. I, I don't think there's Bieber fever, but I just stayed in a hotel in Chicago where One Direction was staying, uh, and yeah. that was feverish. There is One Direction Ebola going around. <laughs> that's, for, that's for sure. There's, it was the was there a thing. Beatles-esque crowd out front? I kept letting little girls like in, saying, like, oh, they're with them. They're with me, and then letting them like run around the hotel. You know, yeah. I did that at a hotel. I kept letting little girls in. It didn't work. Really? Yeah, like, hey, they're with me. <laughs> Different result at it the end of the so night. Cute. I got they kicked out. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, innkeeper. The little girls are with me. It's different if, if uh, One Direction is not in your like hotel, Lee. Oh, yeah. that's they weren't. That was, <laughs> oh, yeah. was that the pretty problem? Pretty I also like oh. that you, play, you stayed in a place that had an innkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> like they, they walked up with like the, their head stocking on and a yeah, candle. Yeah, a little candle in a tray. Yeah, where were you staying? Ghosts come at night. 1950s Stockholm. Is that where you were staying? <laughs> it was a gentler time back then. <laughs> hey, welcome to the Movie Showcast, everybody. Part of the vast and sprawling Movie Guys empire. And hey, they laughed at Louis Armstrong when he said he was going to go to the moon. Now he's up there laughing at them. You've reached ground zero for all things movies and comedy. We bring the two together right here on our show every week with jokes, rants, sketches, characters, bits, special guests, and more as we broadcast from the Admirals Club in the heart of Burbank Airport's flyover zone. They don't stop making movies, so we don't stop making comedy shows about movies, which means you can get a new show from us every week. Basically, search uh, Google or Yahoo or... Bing! Bing! And we come right up. That's iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, Stitcher, and of course, themovieguys.net, absolutely free, and we encourage you to subscribe where you can, and if you do, still, no charge. Ooh. And the cricket sound you hear? That's no charge. Good. Also, That's no charge. That's free. <laughs> Uh, speaking of the movieguys.net, newly posted to the site is another of our uh, movie guy, Ray Scalacci's ongoing series, Worth Reviving. He's looking at old movies and letting you know about them that, that should get a second look. Uh, this time he's ta- writing about the ninth configuration. You ever see that movie? No. Who wrote that? That's because it came out in 1980 when oh. everyone was watching The Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> oh, yeah. And this was a William P- uh, Peter Blatty movie. Oh, okay. That does sound familiar. Moving into directing after The Exorcist now to make an original movie with... Uh, Scott Wilson William and Stacey Keach. Blatty. <laughs> apparently it's really good and deserves a second look, so uh, go read... Uh, not right now. We like no. to make... When the show is over, go read Ray's article. That kind of brings up a good point. There's a lot of movies and television shows that'll have hashtag whatever, go to our website while you're watching it. Oh, yeah. Well, they really just Wouldn't you rather you. be on the but internet? But I do that all the there time. You do you go I kind the, of watch TV with like a computer in my... Isn't that so you're funny? a second screen person. They call yeah. it second screen, and right? Like, and if something comes up that I don't know, and I'll be like, "What is that Crimean War anyway?" And they just and I look it up, <laughs> and I just I'm kind of reading Wikipedia, going down like Wikipedia wormholes the entire time I watch what TV. Can you is read and Crimean listen? War. I can't. Read I can and, listen. and dance and sing, <laughs> and make a pie. You're a triple threat. I want to like, watch yeah. a movie with you. At the least. <laughs> <laughs> this is all in the theater. She's <laughs> just oh. saying. She got the laptop and the whole deal. Yeah. yeah, dancing around. Sorry about the blue light, but I want to learn. <laughs> What's the Wi-Fi? Code. <laughs> <laughs> the guy at ArcLight is starting to make this speech. Welcome, and we're going to be doing this if there's any trouble. What's your Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi code? code? <laughs> hey, what's your Wi-Fi password? That would be the greatest thing to say to an ArcLight guy who's doing oh, yeah, that. Be... Hey, what's your Wi-Fi passcode? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, hey, I should remind you also, the show cast, like the one you're listening to, can be found on a couple of internet radio stations as well, including WBAD.net, Fridays at 4 p.m., and JonasMountRadio.com, Thursdays at 6 Eastern. Uh, last I looked, also, they are not charging. I'm your host for the hardest-working podcast on the airwaves, Paul Preston, here with Lee Caius, Adam Witt, and Karen Volpe, and as ever, we have a special guest, as we are joined by Emmy-winning writer and actress who has... Who has worked on the likes of the Colbert Report and yeah. the Wanda Sykes Show. Laura Kraft is with us, everybody. Yay. Now, uh, stick with us. We have some reviews to get to, plus Karen's birthdays. But you probably already heard the sound of the phones ringing in the background. Oh. Yeah. As the Admirals Club is bustling with the Movie Guys annual pledge drive. <laughs> Came on the right night, Laura. Ah, everybody loves a pledge drive. Give till it hurts. 
This is the time of year when we ask our listeners to go a little above and beyond and dig deep and give to the movie guys. Now remember, your donations are what keep the movie guys commercial free. <laughs> yes. What are we, uh, four or five minutes? We haven't had a commercial no. yet. Not yet. We receive no federal funding, no government support, no corporate sponsorship. It's up to you, the listener, to keep us going. And so this year, in a show of appreciation, we here at the Movie Guys are going to go above and beyond for you. That's right. We're going to set a world record tonight for most movies previewed ever on a movie-based showcast recorded in a garage studio (laughs) in Burbank on a Wednesday night. So I think that that's going to be... Just an honor to be nominated, really. Really, yeah. We many are, have tried. Many have tried. Few we, have succeeded in this record. We are with someone who's actually won an award, so I'm inspired. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's going to go well. All right. Now, real quick recap for those of you giving this evening. With a $10 donation, you will get the uh, Movie Guys tote bag and coffee mug. Ooh. Ooh. And uh, with every $20 package, you'll receive the Movie Guys bedroom slippers. Oh. And with every $50 <laughs> pledge, you get your choice of either Karen or Adam to come to your house and critique your personal movie collection. Yeah. And you better, you better have, have some, some Julia uh, Roberts movies. movies. And- All right. <laughs> so keep those pledges coming as we look at a super crowded October 17th weekend full of movies. First up, let's get right to it. What do you say? Oh, let's what, do it. What's cooler than Brad Pitt with a gun? Brad Pitt with a tank. That's what. In Fury. Plus the animated movie with Terrence Malick, uh, with a Terrence Malick film title, The Book of Life. Mm-hmm. Also, Jason Reitman makes a push for Neil LeBute's job with Men, Women, and Children. And Michael Keaton revives his career by running through the streets of New York nearly naked in Birdman or The Unexpected Virtue of Ignorance. Plus, Kill the Messenger, the latest movie to maybe be about Edward Snowden, based on its title. And also... So you caught yourself a rich girl going through her slumming phase. <laughs> Did she tell you that you're special? Ain't nothing. Just look out! Oh! I can't have you getting hurt. Do you want this? Oh, it's you raining. Nicholas Sparks course. loves the rain. <laughs> Bad things. Everybody's when you blows in the rain. He, you'll never find him in a desert. Oh God, no. <laughs> that he is the best. He's gonna be sad in a desert. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't. He couldn't write anything that was in a desert. Mm-hmm. There's no rain. No, it's a full slate. So we got a lot of movies to get if there's to. There's no humidity. He's out. It sounds like a record-breaking slate, Paul. Yeah. Indeed, it is. I think Guinness is watching. They got us on the clock. So let's get to it. All right. At first glance, Fury looks like a sequel to Balls of Fury, because that's what you do with sequels. You invoke the Fast and Furious principle and just shorten the original title. Then I realized, why would you make a sequel to Balls of Fury? Adam, let's talk about what it's really about. Here we go. Okay, Paul. Furry tells the story of a soldier in World War II who valiantly fights the Axis forces while dressing in a bear costume and having sex with people dressed like squirrels. Jesus, you're confused too? All right, listen. Here, let's figure this out. It's not furry. This good. is oh. Fury, not oh, Furry. No, I see. It's about a tank battalion in World War II. All right, well, I like my version better, but then again, I'm imagining it in 3D. <laughs> all right, now Fury is a tank drama. Is it just me or are we all sick of these tank dramas? Every month, another tank drama. Fury is said to be based on, the, on a true story. That is, if you're willing to believe that in the 40s, a country the size of Montana decided to take over Europe and Asia. Sounds far-fetched. Fury presents World War II as seen through the eyes of a new soldier, Norman, played by Logan Lerman, who finds a new family in the five-man crew of a Sherman tank named Fury, led by Brad Pitt, who plays tank commander Don War Daddy Collier. Now, War Daddy was injured in a battle, leaving him without the ability to create nuanced nicknames. (laughs) Thus, the names of War Daddy's teammates, Maps McGee, Shooty Nazi Carlson, <laughs> Drivey Guy Gillespie, and Soldier Johnson. Now here's a clip of their first meeting in Italy. Gli amici della vedetta ammirata da tutti noi questa gemma propria della nostra cultura saranno naturalmente accolti sotto la mia protezione per la durata del loro soggiorno. Buongiorno. <laughs> the soldier's medal is tested when the tank finds itself alone against 300 of the worst kind of Nazis. Armed to the teeth, with no knowledge of how World War II turns out. <laughs> and wherever there are Germans, Brad Pitt will be there killing them. Seems like Mr. Pitt has a real axe to grind with the old Deutschland. We will be cruel to the Germans. And through our cruelty, they will know who we are. Each and every man under my command owes me 100 Nazi scalps. And I want my scalps. But how does this movie measure on the Lebufo meter? <laughs> well, a 10, because it actually stars the actor whose name sounds like a croissant. Shia LaBeouf, who enters his career's mustache phase. You would think that with a tank as the centerpiece of your movie that you wouldn't need to rely on the boom, boom, boom music score for your trailer. You'd think that. But you would be wrong. 
the crossroads. These troops get by you, we're all dead in the water. All we got is you. So there ain't no crusade together like we have. That's because of him. You know what's waiting for us? Keeping the timpani players at work. It helps start the whole timpani union. Yeah, but I can't tell what's blowing up Nazi Germany or a percussion section of a 64 piece orchestra. There you go. That's fury, everybody. Talk about a take. Talk about it. There you go. All right. You're not excited about Fury. Oh, my God. I couldn't even watch the trailer. Really? I was just like. She's so sick of World War II. Aren't there any other wars? Can't we? What about the Boer War? Crimean War? There's been so many wars. Too soon? For the <laughs> well, I, there's other wars, just none that we've won. Yeah. yeah that's what we like to tell this one. Yeah. We got the two big ones, and then we kind of went downhill after that. I think part of the reason I'm not excited about this movie, because I'm with you on that, is that I look at it, and I think of Brad Pitt just not being a guy who would actually be able to handle war. Oh, I really? I don't really? buy it. You think he, you, you, I think he'd be He's too big out. of a coward? And I think. I get that feeling from him. that Because if, he's an actor? An actor <laughs> all I don't know. Maybe. Is it because he keeps his shirt on, Karen? Yes. If so. it were Matthew McConaughey. No, I just feel like he would try to get out of being drafted. Do you think like you think he are you taking that from the haircut because it's such a bad haircut you felt like he was sitting in the chair and he didn't know how to say like this, this looks bad on me please don't cut my hair so close on the sides and then you're like, that's you're it. No, wait, well, you're you're think- Brad Pitt dodge the draft or the act the character in the movie you're Brad thinking Pitt. of uh, Brad Pitt you're thinking of Floyd from True Romance he would he would do- dodge the draft <laughs> he would yeah. dodge the draft. I don't know. I just there's certain people that I don't imagine being at now, war. Is, is that because he's a pretty boy? Because he uglies up for these things. But no, sort I of. think he just sort is of. too yeah, kind. Yeah, he's still too. Uh, I think I, well, I'm going <laughs> from the point of view of I think he's too kind and too smart and couldn't just let someone tell him what to do. You have to kind of let yourself become um, a, mach- a, a machine that can be manipulated by someone else. Who's too kind? Brad Pitt is too kind. I don't think he would be pushed around he's that mean. easily. Where's would Tom mean? Hanks be pushed around? No, he was in um, the Saving around Private Ryan. I didn't push her around her. Either. I'm a pusher around her. Did he do like a bunch of World War II movies too? I feel that you have to seem like you're easily controlled, and those guys don't. Hmm. Well, they are a ragtag bunch of the uh, Logan Lerman <laughs> is uh, easily controlled because he's the new guy, Logan Lerman. Logan Lerman. I was looking for a tank. Is there a tank here? here? Are you guys my tank battalion? I hope there's no cats in the tank because I'm allergic. I love to have allergy guys. Uh, I have allergies. Are we going to be in Italy because I should take some kind of a pill? Are there sunflowers or poppies because I, I react poorly to poppies? I have a gluten thing. There's a lot of pasta. Also, no bees. I can't have any bees in the tank. I'll blow up and my tongue will swell. Did you see that in the uh, from what little bit of the trailer? you watched I thought it looked like Star Wars the way that everything that came out of the tank was pink like it looked like lasers like little lasers, lasers. Like, like, yeah. Yeah. tracer bullets or whatever or do they whatever all they die are. or do they what, what, they win right they World War Wait, let, let, me, let me tell all the listeners here what <laughs> happens at the end of who knows? Where is going to go? The country wins World War II, obviously. We oh, know yeah. the ending of the war, but I don't know the ending of this battalion. Are they with, like, Patton or something? Like, do we know which general? They're with General War Daddy or whatever. No. Was. I mean, it all might be it's made up, right? I think these are, I think it says based on a true story, but it means World War II. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the true story. Like Patton had that, um, I'm, I'm basing this on the movie Patton, a great movie. Please, this that, you're in the right place. Tank battalion, like, <laughs> he had, a, like, a, a push with tanks through Italy. And remember, and he went up against Montgomery. You looked this up, didn't you? No, I didn't. He watched the Fury trailer and went right to the computer, just like (laughs) you said. I got to learn shit now. She has it out right now. (laughs) She knows all about the tank battalion, because I don't. (laughs) Basing this on a movie. Now, I think this is more one where they're left alone and they have to fend, you know, like this, this kid has to sort of grow up quickly. Because they end up alone against 300 Nazis. I Nazis. guess it's been that long where Shy is not the kid growing up anymore. Oh, that's true. Logan yeah. Lerman is now, playing. Now they got to bring Lebeau's in the park. kid. Yeah. yeah. Didn't also didn't our whole country fight in World War II? And doesn't it seem like Brad Pitt? It's always like one town in Missouri fought. It's always like the same <laughs> accent. It's like I'm a, this is a soldier accent. Every time. Oh yeah, you're right. He's never the soldier He's from, never like uh, a, from Iowa. He's Boston, like from, yeah. Yeah. Florida. Kentucky. Where is he from uh, in real life? Missouri. Is he? Yeah. Uh, he, oh, so he's from Missouri. He's from Missouri. He went to University of Missouri. Graduated one semester short to move out to Hollywood. Stalker. What? Wow. Well, somebody so knows that? a little bit about Stalker Brad Stalker or People Magazine avid reader? Ah! <laughs> Very similar. Wait, People Magazine gives facts <laughs> with its <laughs> pictures? It always says the person's name, age, and then like usually where where they're a native of. Like Chicago native. Missouri. Oh, wow. What, what is, what is since you, do you read People Weekly I'm also? so glad you asked. What? You read People <laughs> Weekly as well? It is weekly. Okay, yeah. So there is no, there's no difference. I also read like the memoria, the memoriam. 
issues that cost like double the amount, but you could maybe keep the pictures well, for your wall or something. Now that you mentioned that's a yes. it, is I, that, I don't. But I, is I that adult pinups? Is that the new Tiger Beat you put up? Uh, you know, uh, they <laughs> have like a Princess Diana dies. They have like the people in memoriam. Yeah. Issue. Uh, so, uh, since you read uh, People Weekly, what did Brad Pitt do this week that's just like us? <laughs> First of all, that's us. Magazine. Does. Oh, is that oh, us? He us just said weekly. The word yeah, Adam. You're embarrassing us all. Sorry. We're not the periodical guys. <laughs> he, uh, but I did have a. Pres- I did have a she, he's doing a movie right now with Angelina, where uh, she is directed it and wrote it, and they're starring in it together. Wow. Hmm. Oh, maybe he could go to war. Has somebody tell him what to do? Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> I take that back. I haven't seen one of his uh, one of her directorial movies. She's, she's got a new one coming out, Unbroken or something like that. Uh, yeah. With the, uh, which is that book by, about again World War Two. A track star who goes and fights as a pilot is shot down is in a Japanese POW camp. And guess what, guys? He's unbreakable. He runs away really fast? He runs. That's how he escapes? He runs, but then he gets caught. Oh. No, he gets caught in sea. He's like on oh. a... Oh, and he's, well, you said he's a track he's star. By, I thought he yeah, like, first relied he's like on like an Olympic track star. Yep. Then, this is a real guy. This is based on a real man. Then he is a pilot, and he's shot down, and then he's on a lifeboat for like crazy long amount of time and then he's picked up and he's like oh hooray and he's picked up by the J- Japanese and they put him in a POW camp and he's tortured yeah we saw that trailer that trailer looks like three movies it does, <laughs> like there's right? a lot going on in that movie where this guy had a whole lot of shit that to, to contend war with. camp looks not fun yeah like, you could have just his time at sea be its own movie. It's definitely not like a Hogan's Heroes prisoner of war. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's not like Being a prisoner of awesome war is fun. Nuts. Yeah. Doesn't have the good turtle Well, I'm going to see Fury be by myself, well, but I'll go. That's such a wonderfully un-PC place to set a sitcom. A concentration camp. Oh, no. I, that's I insane, right? Yeah, it was Hogan's Heroes? Or POW camp. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Either way, there's some torturing going on there. <laughs> but they had time for, they had time for yuck yucks. Now I'd like to see the concentration camp sitcom, though. Oh, uh, that, you're right. Well, there now you go. I'm totally curious. The day the clown cried. I think. Right? Whoa, hey, everybody. Uh, with the mention of the concentration camp, yeah. the phone calls have <laughs> board, that, the boards have lit up. Is, wow. that the, is that the phrase that pays? <laughs> yeah. That was great. The calls are steadily Still coming funny in. after all this time. Yeah. <laughs> 70 years later. Thanks, concentration camp. Uh, let's wow. take a moment to actually talk about who's manning the phones here in the, uh, in the Admirals oh, yeah, Club. We've got past showcast guests oh, manning sure. the phones here, so we've got... <laughs> Mark Borchert there, confusing people who call in. That's look, great. Look at that. We have uh, we have uh, Dave Rizowski. Fuck this telethon! <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's Dave Rizowski. Yeah. Uh, it's good to see Ted Ramey back. Hey, Ted. How you doing? Good job. He's doing uh, impersonations for the people on the That's right. Phone. He's pretending he's, to he's be He's making directors. them think that they've reached... Uh, uh, <laughs> we also have those filmmakers. Fra- uh, yeah. <laughs> Alfred Hitchcock. <laughs> what were you going to say? <laughs> uh, I was going to say we have those filmmakers that we couldn't understand when they were on the show. Oh, the, the Czech filmmaker and the actor... One of them was from, I think, Venice, like California. Yeah, still couldn't understand. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, they were trying. California. Well, we we do reach an international audience, Karen. So it's best if we have somebody who can speak the other language right. when people call. <laughs> That's a good point. Whatever that other language might be. Look, we have Andrew Dewitt on the uh, on the phone there. I'm a grown man. I do grown man things. <laughs> <laughs> like answering phones. But no ass. ass eating. No ass eating. Oh, come on, Andrew. Andrew. You guys kicked Just, off YouTube again. Yeah, really. Why is he sitting on the phone? <laughs> I'm dying to talk to Ike over here because uh, I. He's totally hooking up with that one nurse on the Mindy Project, and I cannot deal with how great that show is. And I want to see if he had any puppies in his pocket. We'll talk about that it's after the puppy, show. not a puppy, Karen. He's busy on the phone right now. I know. Yeah, I let know. the man answer the phones, because we need to raise some money. Right. Uh, but let's get on to our next film while we're doing that. Do you like your box trolls a little more Dia de los Muertos? Uh, wish granted with the Book of <laughs> what Life. What phrase mean? Lee. <laughs> yeah, a guy from 1950s like, what the hell did what he What the hell? Say? I said that. <laughs> Not a lot of kids' movies could get away with the tagline, Embrace death, kids. But if any animated movie could convey to kids that the afterlife is a party, it's the book of life. Now, Paul, do not be fooled. This may not actually be a real movie. Even though the title has the word book in it, the movie itself is not based on a book. Ah, I see. Now, this is a film inspired by the Mexican holiday, The Day of the Dead, which I think is the Mexican version of a Comic-Con zombie walk. Yes. (laughs) The movie was originally titled The Day of the Dead. But when market research showed that most kids would love to see a movie named that, the title was changed to something parents could approve of while they take their kids to see something else. The Book of Life is the exact opposite of what the movie is about, generating a blander title in the process. But just think of how many more people would go see A Live Girl, or Star Peace, or Robots That Stay Cars. I think of the budget savings on all of those. It's just good financial sense all around. 
The land of the living, the land of the remembered, the land of the forgotten, the three fantastical worlds of this film celebrate the three phases of this movie's march from theaters to Blu-ray to instant streaming. This film contains no sassy dogs, no kung fu, Ooh. and despite casting Ice Cube, nobody raps. <laughs> it actually looks like a refreshing storybook movie that makes up for its convoluted plot with a transportive visual atmosphere. But then again, I haven't seen Frozen yet, so I don't know whether I should expect more out of animated movies these days. Look, I know it helps if you stock your animated unrecognizable voices, but I think Channing Tatum playing Joaquin, a Spanish Prince Charming, might be a bit of a stretch. They want Charlton Heston to play a Mexican. <laughs> and Zoe Zaldana is cast here as voice talent, because the biggest problem people have with Zoe Zaldana is looking at her. It's Twas the Night Before Christmas meets Love Story meets Hercules meets Puss in Boots meets... All right, look. <laughs> the trailer to this movie is a little confusing, so we decided to turn to the internet for further explanation. So here we go. According to Wikipedia, the film is described as the journey of Manolo Sanchez, a young man who is torn between fulfilling the expectations of his family and following his heart. In love with the beautiful Maria, yet having to battle with the affections of the charming Joaquin to win her heart, the spirits... Uh, La Muerte and Zabalba bet on who will win Maria. Afraid to lose the bet after Maria falls for Manolo, Zabalba sends a snake to kill Manolo, hoping that will result in Joaquin becoming Maria's lover. Yeah. In order to return to the human world and to Maria, Manolo embarks on an incredible journey that spans three fantastical worlds where he must face his greatest fears, armed only with his wits, his guitar, and his two swords. Any questions? Why Who's Hercules yeah, no, and what happens at the first thing? thing? Great, moving on. Here we go. That's the book of life, everybody. Sorry, I have no time for your question. Uh, uh, <laughs> the thing about this whole Day of the Dead that I like that's come out of it is on Facebook, you see people, they dress up like that. And I like when women have, like, low-cut shirts on. I like when women have low-cut shirts on, too. Uh, yeah. And you can see their... Um, they, Boobs? No. Oh. They paint over their breasts to make it look like you can see inside to their skeleton. And oh. it looks cool. I'm losing my boner. Oh. I'll tell you who's excited about this movie. The Cricket. <laughs> right? <laughs> Amped it up, right? Yeah. He actually, he actually stopped halfway through the preview. It threw me off. I'm like, hey. Uh, have you guys seen this? They always like, like tell me more. <laughs> 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 I'm in. Everybody looks I'm like interested. Frida Cara. I've seen this trailer, yeah. and that whole description you've given, Paul, none of that happens in the trailer. So I don't know how much that much can be <laughs> happening and not be shown in five minutes of the movie. Yeah, they do like churro jokes and stuff yeah. instead. Yeah, like, <laughs> they really do. <laughs> I feel like half the trailer is just her being like opening the book and being like, this is the book of life. <laughs> it's, a, yeah. it's a lot. It's a lot. Of it's a big-ass no, book. There's numerous tomes. Here's another one. Here's another one. <laughs> yeah. It's a three-and-a-half-hour movie. I don't know if we've said that. <laughs> But is it a three and a half hour movie? No, I don't know. It's, yeah. it's a big book. Could you imagine? How far did you get through the trailer? Uh, like a third of the way of through a two minute trailer. <laughs> that's, <Yeah>. that's two <laughs> minutes. That's as much sense wow. as the rest of it's going to make. <laughs> but this would be, I think this will be, do you think it'll win the weekend? Oh. oh. No. 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 What's it up against? Just, Gone but the Fury is the only, there. Gone oh, Girl's yeah. really good, but third, it'll be the third week. Gone Girl won the last two weekends. Better. That was yeah. great. You saw that? I haven't seen it. Oh, that movie's fantastic. Is it? It's oh, fantastic. David Fincher. such mixed reviews. It's such a smart movie. Really? Yeah, yeah I don't get it. You, the whole thing about the Fury and the Book of Life, I think you'll like it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, Dave, it's David Fincher. It is a solid piece of work. Man, that story the carries the day. Paul and I were sitting there, you know, watching what we thought we were going to see. Halfway through, stuff is going on. We're like, what is happening? <laughs> yeah. Had you, you hadn't read the book. No. Yeah. Oh, I read the book. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah. But I think they make a major change to it that I think improves it, too. So check out the film. Well, tell I'm, me that later. Now, right. so wait, you've read the book, you read the book, and then you saw I did the not movie? read the book. No. I haven't seen the movie yet. Oh, you haven't seen the movie? I want to. Okay. Because I'm curious if you've read the like I, I, I I've heard people say oh I want to read the book before I see the movie I'm like well at this point I just want to find out how it ends yeah. in the movie you know it's so good. I want to read the I kind of that movie made me want to read I think I want to read the book. <laughs> I just that realized though yes. that this will win the weekend because there's a huge Hispanic audience there you go so yeah. the Latino crowds and come kids out. kids and Hispanic and there's tons of kids but what Hispanic. about the trailer tells me that. That is a Hispanic. Well, it's a oh, famous that's holiday. That holiday. Yeah. But they call it the wrong thing. They all look like Frida Kahlo. <laughs> Life is a thing in. in oh, is lights? it? Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah, okay. it's the Day of the Dead. It's a big ass thing. Don't you, you go on the those. Facebook? Yeah, they do on the Facebook. Hollywood Cemetery. They do the whole Day of the Dead oh, okay. there and everything like that. There's a big event here. After watching the 
20 seconds of the trailer. Laura, and no doubt you jumped on the internet to find out what the Day of the Dead is. Go ahead and tell I us all about it. I already knew what Dia de los Muertos <laughs> is. Um, Dia de los Muertos. Because I did a presentation in seventh grade in Senora Marshall's Spanish class. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Dia de los Muertos. And I may or may not have brought flan. Um, <laughs> you want yeah. that A, you bring I flan. Bring flan. <laughs> I also know a lot of like facts about Frida Kahlo. Same kind of oh, okay. uh, presentation in the Spanish Kalo, class. Sorry, I just but, uh, they... No, you said Frida Kahlo before. Did I? Okay, I was, I was saying it, then I'm like, ah, I'm not sure, but I'm going to go for it. Oh. You're a bro. That's, we know what you mean. Um, <laughs> I think it looks pretty. so... I'm just sick of... <sighs> I want to like an animated movie, but I just don't like any... I like The Incredibles. Right. But the last ones I've seen have just not inspired me. I loved Up. Oh, well, yeah. I'm the only person I know cheating, who hated Up. Oh, that's Pixar. funny. Mm. Everyone was saying? like, didn't you cry in the first two minutes of Up? And I was like, no. Ah! <laughs> you're the only person I know who didn't You didn't cry. shout that in the theater, though. <laughs> I'm not crying! I was, like, I was like, we're all about entropy. Everything is moving towards chaos. What did you expect to happen? You had a happy relationship. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> you were happy and she died. Everybody Laura dies. would like to calm the audience down. Everyone <laughs> oh, stop relax. thinking. You're going to die, too. Enjoy our show. Oh, I love popcorn. It. You might choke on that. We're all going to die. <laughs> Enjoy the, the show. Movie. <laughs> <laughs> Totally. Awesome. You were well, happy. Did what you, did you expect? Hey, did Pixar you ripped my. We're no longer talking about that movie. Yeah, we'll get to okay. it. Pixar ripped my heart out in Toy Story 2. I, I wasn't too shocked that they did it again in, in Up. You know, I mean, when that the, Was Toy the Story whole. Story 2 really sad. Well, there's a segment called When She When She Loved Me, and it's it's the montage of the past life of one of the toys we meet mm-hmm. and how her she was discarded when the kid got older and oh, like put in Salvation Army and all that. It was just brutal. Brilliant. Again. But brutal. When you're talking about animated movies today, talking about Pixar is cheating. If you say, I liked, you have to go somewhere. If we're talking about the <clears> state <throat> of animated movies, you yeah. can't go, well, I like Toy Story and I like Up. Well, of course you... I like, like Regan Ralph. Yeah, I uh, like Ralph. that, too. It's That's Disney. Yeah. Really this is Guillermo it. del Toro jumping into the mix. So, I mean, what? for that, it might be worth checking out. The one thing I'll say about this and Box it's Trolls... Great. Yeah. yeah. I heard Box Trolls was great. Is it great? It looks great. I'm just saying, like, these two movies have, like, a completely different look and style and feel and come from a completely different place. Like, I kind of like, I mean, maybe I won't ever see this. I'll probably see Box Trolls, though. I'm, I'm way too I curious about that. I want to see Box Trolls really badly. Yeah. yeah. I'm curious about that. And I love animated TV. Like, King of the Hill is probably my favorite show ever. Yeah. I love it. What is it you like most about that? Because I actually do like about that. King of the Hill? Yeah, about King of the Hill. But because there's something. Because it's so real. And the is characters it? are so real. The character of Bobby is, like, so many things. People who I know. Oh, it's, yeah. It's so funny that it's animated, but it, it's probably one of the most realistic shows. See, I like I like it for for Hank Hill. I love anybody who is just that principled. He's it so might be great. wrong. He might not always have the correct answer, but he has the answer that is right for him in every situation. <laughs> yeah. I go through life wondering if everything I've done is a mistake. Hank Hill is convinced. He knows exactly what he needs to do in every situation. I always kind of base characters on whether or not I think I could buy them a present for their birthday. Oh, absolutely. You can get Hank Hill. Hank Hill. You know exactly what he wants. Lo- yeah. Yep. And he'd be happy. He'd be, he would, you he know what to get him, it. and he'd be it. Yeah. And so. after, like, Homer Simpson, to have such an original father, you know, Even in, in a cartoon. Even Homer so real. Yeah. Like, a lot of those relationships are, are so ama- I mean, that like, a lot of the situations are crazy or whatever, but the... The emotions and the things that happen. Oh, I've real. cried during Simpsons episodes. <laughs> when Homer was talking to Lisa about something, about how pretty she is, I was like... <laughs> oh, yeah. Anytime they hit you mess. with heart, it's like a right yeah. cross you didn't see coming. You're like, yeah. oh, they get you. All right. Well, uh, keep the donations pouring in, everybody. Uh, we're all headed towards chaos and the end of the world. So, uh, you're all going to die, so donate. <laughs> your donations allow us to preview more Make movies for you. <laughs> well, this, this will be right up your alley, then. Okay. Feeling good? Liking life and bopping around without a care? Well, then you might want to avoid our next film. Men, Women, and Children. The winner of the Sundance Award for Blandest Title. Beating out a guy, a dog, and a bowl of ramen. And garbage truck. Karen, let's talk about it. Here we go. Men, Women, and Children, a title every movie could have, is actually about the internet. And how it's infiltrated our lives. Here's a clip from the movie's Facebook page. I think if I disappear tomorrow, the universe wouldn't really notice. It's true. <laughs> He's right. Uh, no, they wouldn't. That's because you're a teen. <laughs> You haven't done anything yet. You don't, you're not interesting yet. <laughs> in, in, in the Blu-ray player, then we'll talk. In addition to uh, the internet... <laughs> The movie stars, as you could hear in that clip, 
Sirius Piano, and <laughs> Ansel Elgort. We're so sorry, Ansel Elgort. Oh my God. <laughs> We're so sorry, but we have now, you may remember Elgort getting overshadowed by Shailene Woodley in The Fault in Our Stars. Here he's overshadowed by Jennifer Gardner and uh, Adam Sandler. I think if I disappeared tomorrow, the universe wouldn't really notice. <laughs> wow! The internet! <laughs> Ties together the parents and children of a couple families, raising the questions if the parents who are critical of the children's online habits are actually qualified to make that judgment. Remember when angst was for teens? Well, that's no longer the case. We can all be unhappy. Thanks, internet. Wait, I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> Adam Sandler plays a husband who resorts to online porn when he finds out he's been cast alongside a female co-star older than 30. When she finds an affair on AshleyMadison.com, must be a Howard Stern listener, and he finds an escort online, the couple comes to find their problems has, problems have been caused by the internet. <laughs> All right, internet. <laughs> Calm down, internet. Sandler is getting serious in the movie. You can tell for two reasons. He's fat. And when he types on his phone, he doesn't go, beep a poo da pa poo doo beep a doo doo and Jennifer Garner's wearing glasses, which is the female oh. equivalent of growing a beard. <laughs> this must be one of her serious movies. The film contains sexual content and violence, and it's rated R, which means it's the perfect movie for all men, women, and well, that's it. <laughs> I want to like every Jason Reitman movie, but it's hard to tell whether the buzz on this film is positive or negative. But according to Rotten Tomatoes, it's only got a 30%. And that's a site that cares enough about movies to leverage judgment on the art form of cinema with vegetables. Let's just say that the Wilmette Week and the Fort Worth Star-Ledger Telegram thought the message of the movie fell flat. Men, women, and children with a title like that prepare to be underwhelmed. I know you can be overwhelmed, and you can be underwhelmed, but can you ever just be whelmed? I think you can in Europe. All right, well then, prepare to be whelmed. Whelmed. It's a very whelming movie. Now, it's a tough streak to keep up, but once upon a time, Jason Reitman was batting a thousand. Every what movie was, was great. What did he do that was good? Thank you for smoking. Okay. Uh, Juno. Oh, yeah, Up in the air. Yep. And there's one in there that I'm missing. Well, I don't know. We what did you do after before Labor Day? I liked Labor Day actually. Labor Day is pretty decent. Yeah, yeah I didn't like the ending. Kind of lost me at the end. But Young Adult was the one before that. Oh. I loved Young Adult. You loved the Young Adult. I'm the only person I know who loved Young Adult. Yeah. I don't remember it really. Oh, it was so good. It looked pretty original. It was so great. Uh, it was written by the. Diablo Cody. Oh, yeah, Diablo Cody. And, and it was about a woman who writes YA novels under, under like, ghost writes them for someone. And uh, she's going back to... She, I now her. remember this. She goes back to her, throws, hometown. goes back to her hometown. Pat Oswalt. Because yes. uh, she sees Pat that Oswald, her... Yes. Pat Oswalt is fantastic in it. And she sees that her ex-boyfriend... She gets invited to her ex-boyfriend's baby shower. So she goes and she's kind of just like wants to sort of win, win him back she's like you could tell she was like really beautiful and popular in high school and it's just I thought it was great but everyone I know doesn't like it I loved it mm. everyone I know didn't see it so. oh yeah I, I didn't <laughs> hey I saw it, it. Like it. oh did I you I saw yeah. the theater and, and the screener yeah but I don't remember it as much as some of his other films mm. so, so do you think that's part of the not batting a thousand because in the room with Labor Day included that I like that he is well the room bats at a thousand yeah <laughs> but it was I mean for a while there it was him and Pixar and Alexander Payne never made a bad movie yeah. and Pixar put out Cars 2 so their streak ended. Yeah. Now Pain's still Marvel. going. Now it's just Marvel. How old was he when he kind did Kind of true. For I mean, <laughs> did they make the first Hulk? Know. Okay. okay. <laughs> right? Yeah. Thank you for smoking. How old was he? Because he's, he's Ivan's he's son, like right? Yeah. He was like 12 when he did that movie. He's my age, isn't he? Because I'm 30. And he, when that movie came out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he might be younger than us. Put on your 30s hair. God, I hope he's not younger than us. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he is younger than me. Thank you for smoking. He's 15 years old. 10 years old. Ish. It's a while ago. Yeah, it might be ten. I bet that's ten years old. Ten years old. old. Yeah. Jamie. No, oh, we have no Jamie to figure these things out. Sometimes we have a girl who runs our board, has a phone, 
fixes she's everything doing we what fuck you up. Do. She just looks stuff up. She's like, no, yeah, no. You're wrong. <laughs> you really should have thought that out before you got on yeah. the air. Well, we've okay. never seen up in the air. I need to see oh, that. Right? Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, Anna Kendrick's quite great in that. Ah. And George Clooney's great in it. And uh, I love Vera George Clooney. From Mikla, or however you say her name, is great. In yeah. It. Oh, Vera from Mikla. Clooney makes everything look easy. He does. Doesn't he? Yeah. Get laid, making movies, everything looks easy. Yeah. Yeah. Including Batman and Robin. So we originally thought of doing this whole preview <laughs> on our phones, right? Yes. Like sitting here on our phones just talking about men, women, and children not saying anything, but kind of makes for a dull podcast. <laughs> but, you know, that's I the essential... I hope that doesn't make for a dull movie. I don't want to read the whole movie, too. In the preview, we have to keep reading text and stuff. Yeah. Well, it's, I think it is one of those things. Remember that movie with... Um, Cameron Diaz and Kate Winslet, where they switch like houses, and Kate Winslet comes. Yeah, in something holiday. shoes. No, it's just holiday. oh, the holiday. Oh, that's yeah, in yeah. Her shoes. That's a great. In her movie shoes. Too. Yeah, yeah. I love that movie. The holiday. You're right, with Jack holiday. Black. Yeah, and half of it's them saying like, "Do you want to stay in my house? Do you want me to stay in your house?" But they just are like, they handle it by rather than us seeing it. They, we also see some of the emails, but they talk while they type. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's oh, fun. That's so funny. Do you yeah. have a door? Where would I get the key? Like, do it's you, like you have? See, do you I'm have exaggerating, but you like sort of see. It's kind of like your house. I know that that was like so many meetings of like, how do we show the yeah. emails? Yeah, like, exactly. They, they land on the actor will just read it like you do when you type. And that, so then after that, I was sort of cognizant. Do I ever talk when I type? Never. 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 I never write. Never. Like, oh, really? Send. Like I, I've never done that. In my you know life. what? In the future of that the, and the sequel of that movie, it'll be taken care of because they'll just turn on their phone and they'll talk into it and do the text to talk thing. Oh yeah. oh yeah. They'll be like, Siri, find out if she has a door. So they just had to drive the whole time? <laughs> right. Did you see right. the movie Chef? No, I hear no. that. Yeah, I really want to see There's a lot that. of like texting on the screen like and and he'll tweet something and then he'll send it and like I don't know if it's underwritten by Twitter. <laughs> like the uh, bird from Twitter will sort of like an animation of the bird from Twitter will be like <laughs> and it will like fly. It's so <laughs> It's interesting to think of like social media because anytime you get notes like from a network or whatever, they're always like, "Can you integrate social media?" And you can well, see that course. all these people are integrating. It. That's the movie. Just seems crazy. The trailer for Men, Women, and Children. Oh yeah. What do you well, think of a TV show called Selfie? I think that's that's too that starts with uh, too on social media, right? Yeah. It starts well, with too social on media, and it's also sort of um, uh, based on Pygmalion and or My Fair Lady. Oh, is like, it? Like there's a character named like Henry Higgins and the. Female's character's name like Eliza or something. Ah. Wait, she's cleaning him up or he's cleaning he's her cleaning up? He's cleaning her up um, in terms of she's, um, from. I've only seen the pilot, but she sort of is uh, living in the social media world mm. too much and she's not living in real life. Ah, uh, and he's got to bring her back. He's, he's oh, that's her. interesting. See, I never knew that from the poster. Yeah, they make the posters seem like, I'm She's doing duck face. Yeah, yeah. 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 Really, I'm taking a selfie message. and someone's photobombing me. Hashtag photobomb. So maybe yeah. it's and I like a John Cho. brilliant. Yeah. It's a, oh. I know, I do too. It and could be El- Emily Kupnick, who wrote it, is great. Mm. I was just going to say, it could be a brilliant way to set this net out there for all of the young people who really need to get a better form of entertainment so they just go here's a big chocolate cake of stuff you love and then once they get in there they find the uh the love story and they find a way to the oyster pearl they actually find something a little more substantial right but when you see the trailer for men women and children and there's a lot of scenes of like jennifer garner without with glasses on in a sweater as a therapist and i guess she's like a child therapist or family therapist or something and she's just saying like the internet is dangerous I don't let my son or daughter, oh, yeah. or daughter, you know, read her texts. And you're just like, what child is ever going to see that? Who's who's going to go see that? Who's like on a date night? Like, let's get a sitter and go to the movies and see something about how dangerous the internet is. <laughs> no, it's definitely for adults only, just in theme alone. Like, no kid wants but to see it. But not even adults. Like, who? It's one of those That's movies, true. I think, shooting for a real art house, art house. Uh, vibe. And if it misses, it, then it's got nothing left. You I know what I mean? Those movies are like that because it's not going to find the... the the box office, so I I don't know, 30% right. is, doesn't bode well. This is really going towards those stuffy professors that we all had in college. The I, one, I, I told you, they'll be sitting in the back, yeah. I told you. Yeah, I think it is for the people that are like, this internet, oh, finally, there's a movie that says, <laughs> this well, internet. You know what's so funny is like, it's actually- I'm going to write a letter to tell them how great I thought they were it's actually, on paper. It's um, actually designed for Luddites, but Luddites probably wouldn't go to the movies because they're Luddites. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's true. Well, they'd be home not watching Netflix Instant, probably. Yeah, they're not going to watch it at home. Men, women, and Luddites. Right. Oh, this just in. Don't Glor- go to a theater, but only one that shows film. <laughs> <laughs> Gloria Steinem is pissed that it's not women, men, and children. That's the only news, <laughs> the new news I have on this. So. Spelled with a Y. Gloria Steinem joke? Steinem yeah, Gloria Steinem joke. joke. Yeah. What the? Oh. Do you cue that every time we do a Steinem joke? <laughs> Uh, that's the halfway through the uh, previews on, oh, a, on our way there. to the uh, oh, so 
to the it. world Laurie record. Just turned 80. No kidding. Isn't that amazing? She looks wow. so great. That is wow. Amazing. Still going. Yeah. She's still causing a ruckus, or is that an old reference? No, she's... It was a never ruckus? a ruckus. Yeah. I don't oh. think How old are you? What? <laughs> I don't know. So are you? I'm ah, very excited. These feminists. I, they always want the, they want the same amount of money as men. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to go see men, women, and children. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I live in words like ruckus. Um, and credenza. Right. Now, for those of you just tuning into this on-demand show, we're in the middle of our Movie Guys Pledge Drive. So far, the turnout's been spectacular. Keep the calls and donations coming in as we get on to our next film, a Lady Antebellum music video, or so it looks, called The Best of Me. Karen? The Best of Me. The Best of Me. Yeah. Can we just listen to that instead of talking about this movie? It wouldn't All count right. toward the record, Karen. All right. <laughs> I'll suck it up. Here we go. Nicholas Sparks doesn't get tired of writing the same book, and we apparently don't tire of watching them turned into movies. The Best of Me is a follow-up to The Notebook or Message in a Bottle, or a sequel to Safe Haven or The Lucky One. Starring Michelle Monaghan, James Marsden, Luke Bracey, and Liana Liberto? Liberato? Sure. I think it's sure. Luca Brazzi. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another movie that's proof that America's small towns are chock full of nothing but gorgeous people. <laughs> Given that this is based on a book... And seeing how we highly doubt many of our listeners will seek this film, <coughs> seek this film out, we'd like to do the first ever Movie Guys Cliff Notes preview. This preview has the best music. <laughs> it really does. I had to make up I'm for gonna, it somewhere. I'm going to adapt this preview into a Broadway musical. <laughs> <laughs> Wait until it comes out into a movie. That's perfect. Now, in the spirit of taking long, earnest romantic novels and condensing them into easily digestible two-hour movies, the movie guys would like to go one better and take an earnest romantic two-hour movie and reduce it down to just the 11 or so bullet points, saving you the time, money, and emotional distress of having to watch another Nicholas Sparks movie. So, for the first time, the Movie Guys Cliff Notes movie preview for Nicholas Sparks, The Best of Me. Boy from the wrong side of the tracks, he falls in love with a girl from the right side of the tracks. Boy accidentally kills the town doctor and goes to prison. Boy gets out of prison and leaves town. Boy gets blown up in a huge explosion on an oil rig. Boy returns home to bury his father. Boy reunites with girl from the right side of the tracks. Girl is married now. Boy and girl screw. Girl stays with husband. Then the boy real- Whoa, 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 whoa! going to give away the ending? Okay. Um, how's this? Mm -hmm. Girl loses her memory. Boy tells her that their love is strong enough to do anything. They both die peacefully in bed together. Paul, I'm sorry, but that is the ending of The Notebook. That was the same yeah. thing. All right, there we go. That's I love The Notebook. Best of me. Did you love The Notebook? Oh, my God. James Garner, right? Yeah. Oh, so amazing. You just want someone to love you that much. Wait a minute. Rockford was in that movie? Yeah, he's yeah, amazing. Yeah. He plays the older... Why have I not been... That's a really good movie. Ooh. It's a good movie. He's okay. really... And also, who's the wife? The, um, Jenna Rollins. Yeah, yeah. she's so oh, good. She's so good. Wow. I love Jenna Rollins. And there's... The only problem What's is that movie has... um. The Notebook, there's like five times where Rachel McAdams is like, I'm a bird. Like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> Somehow I that. forgot that part. They got, Catch me, I'm a bird. They're in the like, rain. I'm saying you're a bird. <laughs> they're totally in the rain. I don't remember that part either. Yeah, she's like running in the beach. And she's like, Catch me, I'm a bird. She had a thing about her, though, in that movie. You just want to fall in love with her. She had a, I don't know, it's that in, uh, intangible thing. I don't know what it is. The it factor? Yeah, the, yeah, she had the it factor. Vagina? Going. Look, she went out there, she had the it factor. She's a star. Okay? She was causing a ruckus is what she was doing. <laughs> I just realized why I haven't seen that movie, because I've been confusing it with The Lake House with Cool uh, Cool Breeze. I like Keanu Reeves and, uh, uh, yeah. I'm and Sandra, Sandra Bullock. I love The Lake House, too. Cool yes! Breeze. That's a great movie. I love that Karen's movie. favorite Isn't guest. Isn't house pretty? Oh, it's gorgeous. I, it. I just want to live amazing. there. He plays the architect. He, he but doesn't the, the notebook house. have like a lake house in it? No, there's a beautiful house in on a lake. No, uh, no, with a boat. Well, it's like on, you have the boat and it's like backwater of like Charleston or South Carolina or someplace like that. Oh, okay. But it's not a, not a lake. Not a lake house I'm per sorry. se. No, but it's a really beautiful. There's a boat in does. it somewhere. I swear. There's a boat. Sure, there is. Why wouldn't there be? Yeah. He ride. He, they ride in the boat. And declare hey, when you're boat. calling in your donations, clear up this whole. Is there a boat at the lake house thing? <laughs> We got uh, at the notebook, <laughs> Lake House boat. Um, so we got Pat Finn, man on the board over there. He'll <laughs> let's call him up. He'll tell you what's up. Did you watch the trailer to the Lake House yes. or the boat? No, to the um, Best of Me. I don't know. Did I? What's? Probably. I don't think so. I don't think I did. <laughs> it's so confusing. I did, yeah. Because the whole point of the story is that it's sort of like they flash back to when they were young lovers, and then twenty years later. But the boy 
the young lover boy character who turns I'm, into James Marsden is like 55 years old. Like he yeah. looks, he's got like this wrinkly forehead and he's like, look, I'm a kid. That you young know? actor? Yeah, he yeah, just he, played he like a real... too old. He's like 25 maybe in real life and he is he, my guest, but he looks like he's 40. Yeah, he just played like a real man in, in The November Man he opposite like Pierce man. Brosnan and they were like dueling CIA agents. Yeah. I don't see him going back to be like a little kid again. And then the girl is like a teenager, so it kind of looks a smidge creepy. Uh, yeah. And then it goes back and he turns into James Marsden who's very, very handsome but is also like 5'2 and a brunette. And you're like, what is that? It's like this Aryan old man. <laughs> yeah, well, this is where the... Like this is where the cliff notes really came in handy because I had to go back and read through the plot point of the novel, which is what I always love about Wikipedia is that the plot yeah. for the movie is just like two lines. Yeah. It's the same story, but if you go to the Wikipedia entry for the book, it's, it's beat for beat. Yeah, it's the whole, yeah. The whole thing. So well, yeah. those people like to read. Yes. That's I, why. I thought about that. It's two movies. I yeah. wondered if Wikipedia heard a lot of uh, guff from uh, folks about how they're giving away the end of movies. playing football Uh, on their lawn? (laughs) (laughs) From you keeping the ball? (laughs) Darn tootin'. But, but like, you could go on to Wikipedia and find out the end of a movie before it opens. Yeah. I I I wonder if they're holding off on that info until the movie opens now. Oh, but do you enjoy that more? I don't care. Because it's the journey, right? (laughs) It's the journey to that ending. I always read, like, I used to love Agatha Christie novels when I was little, or mysteries, and I would always read the end first to see how they get to the end. And really? the whole time you read it, you're really smug. The like, mi- wait, nope, the mystery? The <laughs> <laughs> you feel That's really you smart for like a whole book. Stupid mailman doesn't know what he's yeah. doing. <laughs> Why would she kill him? She doesn't care. She's his daughter. <laughs> <laughs> These people are stupid. You don't even know about the brother. Uh, wait till you find <laughs> that out. Poison. Look for the poison. <laughs> Now, am I in movie jail for the notebook? I haven't seen the notebook. No. Uh, no it's good. I don't think so. We have a thing called have a, movie jail. You do have a girlfriend, so you might want to watch it. You can't even get a movie sure. ticket for really that good. one. Yeah. A movie ticket? But see, it is good. But, but there's got to be an addendum to the movie jail thing where something is so referenced in pop culture. So Frozen may not be one of the greatest movies of all time, but it is referenced like a mother. Like, I feel like I'm in movie jail for, the, for Frozen. I feel like that with Top Gun. I've never seen yeah, that. Yeah, because it's such a reference, right? You should really see it. You know why? Watch it and then notice for yourself that Val Kilmer is chewing the entire movie. <laughs> He's always like popping like, nuts in his mouth. But like in it's places cud. like Mission Control or something, you're like, where are you getting nuts? Like you're in the <laughs> navigation room. And he's just always like kind of back like. I've been on a plane. There's always serious. nuts. Oh, that's great. I, I'll watch it. like a handful that. of nuts constantly. Can I get you, Maverick? Do you have a movie jail movie that you ha- you should have seen by now, but you haven't that puts you in movie jail? Oh, I'm sure there's a lot of them. But you know what I just was a big one is um, I hadn't seen The Big Lebowski for a long time. I'd seen like uh. half of it in high school, and I was like, boring. And then I saw it recently, and I was like, oh, it's really good. Yeah. 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 There's yeah. a reason everyone. Every, I find that every time there's a movie everyone loves, there's usually they're usually good. Mm-hmm. The Big Lebowski was one of those that I did enjoy it in the theater, and I was like, oh, that was a fun time or whatever. I th- it was funny, though. We went, and there was a lot of people that were like, oh, this is the follow-up from those Fargo people who weren't quite oh, really? you know, up on the Coen brothers, maybe didn't know about Raising Arizona. So I felt this mood in the crowd where everybody was there because they were fans of Fargo in a weird way. Did you roll your eyes at them? Like, oh, you guys. Yeah. Coen brothers. But, but you, the true brilliance of that movie is the second watching. Like, I just didn't even realize just how, because there's so many repetitions, there's so many running jokes that the first time you see a movie like that, or I find this way like most Adam McKay movies too, they're so dense that the first time through, you're just figuring out what all the games and beats are. And the second time through, it's like, it's just so much better. Hmm. So that's that doesn't a, surprise me with the Lebowski. Yeah, that's a rewatchable one. Which and that's the best of me, movie. everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Go watch The Big Lebowski in the Notebook. Yeah. That's what we got from that. James Marsden, though, I hope he can pull off Midwest or wherever it is these guys are. Are they in the Midwest? It's golden. It's a lot of golden hues, which yeah. could be really anywhere. Sunsetting. Because he seems very uh, aristocratic. Kind Land of, of the movie. Eternal you know? Sunset. Like, he's, <laughs> yeah. well, he's perfectly well cast in the Anchorman movies, right? Where is, where is he in the second one? I get confused Second now. one. Yeah, he plays that sort of... He's, like a, he's a good rich prick. He's uh, in Superman too, kind of. Yeah, in he's Superman really Returns. Uh, Twenty seven dresses. Is Which he I never saw. Is he a rich prick? He, no, he's a New York Times uh, wedding writer. Yeah, see, Midwest something. though. I don't. I hope that sits on him in this movie. I'll have to go have someone find out for me. There is a great movie. He's great on Thirty Rock. Oh yeah, oh. yeah. James Marsden was. Yeah, was he a dick on that? See, movie? I buy him in New York. I buy him in New York. 
He was a great dick in I'm, I'm forgetting the uh, the name of the movie. I think it's Sex Drive. It was this, like, oh yeah, it was like, I can't that's a movie. It was, yeah, it was like a spring release. And I, I, you I need to remember. say that all again out loud and hear yourself. He was what? a great dick in Sex Drive. <laughs> <laughs> he plays the best <laughs> dickhead meathead brother at the beginning of that. Just everything he says is that total jerk from gym class, and he just <laughs> nails it. And it, it's awesome. Anyway, so watch the first four minutes of Sex Drive. And then go see The Best of Me. <laughs> All right, well, our next film is quite different from The Best of Me and from everything else this year, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, in Birdman, or The Unexpected Virtue of Ignorance, Michael Keaton plays Riggan Thompson, a depressed, self-centered, down-in-his-luck actor, or as we like to call them in Hollywood, an actor. <laughs> Lee, here we go. To the Batmobile. Let's go. <laughs> Atomic batteries to power. Turbines to speed. Roger. Ready to move out. A young boy witnesses the brutal murder of his parents and grows up vowing to fight crime in the city of Gotham. Whoa, 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 whoa. what's going on today? What? That's wrong. Did we oh, get it wrong? I, I again? think you're well, confused. Because of yes. All the phone calls. We just can't. Keep you're our thinking minds. of maybe it was the music I played, but you're thinking of Batman <laughs> uh -huh. starring Michael oh. Keaton. All yeah. right, this is Birdman, and also happens to star Michael Keaton. Oh, okay, I, I see. I there, think. Let, let me explain. In this movie, Michael Keaton plays a guy who's famous for playing a superhero. Oh, so it's the Bruce Wayne story. Okay, I got you. No, no, Michael Keaton plays the guy that plays Birdman in the movies. Paul, I've never heard of a superhero movie called Birdman. It's because it doesn't exist. But I thought you just said that. No, it no, no, only in this movie do movies about Birdman exist. So, Birdman is a superhero. Yes, but only in this movie. Okay, but Batman is a superhero only in movies, Paul. You do reali realize that, don't you? That Batman doesn't really exist. He's just... Exists in yes, I know okay. that. I know that. Thank you for reminding me. But this isn't a superhero movie. But I thought you said it was about a superhero played by Michael Keaton. Well, yes, but he plays the guy that played Birdman. Oh, wait, wait. Okay, I, you mean that white guy with the tattoos on his neck who plays for Miami Heat? That's a real guy. Oh. <laughs> now, this is about a fictitious superhero named Birdman, and this is a story of the guy who played Birdman in the movies. And that guy is played by Michael Keaton? Yes. Oh, okay, that makes sense. I'm with you now. All right, here's a clip. What are you? I'm Batman. Oh, shit. See, I told you! <laughs> yes, you're very smart. Shut up. <laughs> all right, just read the damn material. Lee, this this will go a lot smoother. Now, in the meantime, let me straighten out all this confusion. The plot. Michael Keaton's Regan Thompson was once a huge box office star. Sorry, sorry guys, that's the subtext alert. Oh. <laughs> let me just reset that. Regan is famous for playing a superhero. Okay, okay, but he famously left the role... Jesus Christ. Only to lapse into obscurity to escape the role. All right, this this movie does everything but name the guy who took over Birdman, Val Kilmer. That's so much subtext, I'm not even sure it's even subtext. What do you call what's above the subtext? The text. Okay, that's right, but they never talk about that. Birdman, or things to do in Denver when you're dead, plays out in long takes over four days or so, so Riggin falls apart rehearsing for a career comeback Broadway show, constantly haunted by his movie's alter ego, Birdman, whose voice is a cross between Christian Bale's Batman and Bane. How did we end up here? This place is horrible. It smells like balls. What the fuck is it with you? Birdman. I heard the Christian Bale at the end there. Yeah. That's where I really hear it. Yeah, yeah. I always put that in there myself. I can never tell what's really there. I put that at the end of everything. <laughs> it's the greatest. Birdman, or thanks for everything, Julie Newmar, follows the characters in one continuous shot set to an improvisational jazz drum soundtrack that puts us in the head of a man who very well may be going insane. The first film to do so vividly, uh, the first so to vividly achieve this effect since O.J. Simpson's close up at his trial. Ooh. How did a crazy concept like this get greenlit? We got the actual tape of the pitch ses session, and I think it might be enlightening to hear the process of making this movie. Okay, I want to do a movie called Birdman. Birdman is a superhero. Sold. And the good news, Rex Reed doesn't like the movie. There you go. That's a good sign. Whenever Rex Reed doesn't like it, go out and see that movie. I found that on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm like, when has he ever been right? That's perfect. This must be a good movie. <laughs> yeah, it has right? like a 91%. Tomato meter. Yeah. And he's the one yeah. guy out there being a Didn't he have a, a thing recently where he didn't understand like the, the concept of the movie? 
Maybe. It was he something was where there was the like news. a character who plays like a certain kind of character and he's like, that's ridiculous. And you're like, that was the point. Like, that was the. He didn't understand. How many movies has that man seen? I, right? <laughs> did not understand. Like, There's I, some movie it would where work more if I he called a, 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 an actress fat. Oh, and he yeah. got a lot of, oh that's oh, right. Um, that's what he got. Yeah. Heat. Was it The Heat? It was Megan McCarthy. M- yeah, Melissa McCarthy. McCarthy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was that. You're right. Yeah. And he had a big he had Wait, kinds of trouble with it. Why is he still reviewing movies? Such a jag off. How, How many fat men are in movies and nobody oh, cares? Oh, good point. Yeah. Like nobody it's, even thinks about it. It's great when fat men are in movies. Karen, what are you? What are you crazy? There's the theaters okay. got plenty of room for fat men. <laughs> All right, that's awesome. Who is this guy who I won't? Rex he's a Reed. Great. And has he never met Melissa McCarthy before? It's not like she just showed up and went, hey, what yeah, happened? I know. To it's not like she was, you know, a rail thin model two but weeks ago and then, you like know. Her, she had a pituitary problem. Yeah, like yeah. <laughs> success really went to her waistline. No, this is how she showed up. Yeah, what's all this newness in movies? <laughs> I'm angry, Rex Reed. <laughs> but she is. And he's too. old. I'd like to go on the record and say he's old right now. Well, yeah. There and he, you go. A shitty critic who got old. Yeah, I mean that's really, and that just makes whammy. you kind of shittier. Yeah, there's a critic yeah. character in Birdman. Is there? Uh, oh, it's great. Yeah, well, as he's struggling to put up this. Uh, Have you seen Birdman? We'll get to that. Oh, uh, oh. There, he's trying to get to. Uh, he's trying to put up this play, but the whole time it's all hinges on will the New York Times like it or not. So as Are you his in whole. It? I mean, no, no. I wish. Does oh Guffman? God. Does Guffman show up? <laughs> that <laughs> remains chair to be seen. Is still empty. Yeah. <laughs> But um, when's the last time we had a movie with an or in the title like that? Oh, I know. That's Birdman or The Unexpected Virtue of Ignorance. I know. It's, it's usually like a novel title. Yeah, or the Doctor Strangelove. We yeah, got like back that far? A couple 60s movies would do that as like a kooky thing, like Doctor Strangelove or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. Yeah. yeah. Did, you, what, uh, did you have an or in your Second City show title? Oh, yeah, Second City. That was, was a big ors, thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no. No. I think I have one uh, when I went to see tr- a Toronto show back in like '88. Just uh, bye bye lingual or just say known. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like I think I remember that one. French joke for all you. Yeah. <laughs> Canadians. <laughs> but I can't. Remember. But uh, no, I, well I will go on about this movie later. But yeah, I was uh, gonna say uh, I'll talk about how much I'm excited to see this movie, but somebody's already seen it in the yeah. room. Yeah, Inratu, uh, yeah. Alejandro. Alejandro. Yeah. That's 41 grams. That's your director. 21 grams. 21 grams. Babel. The Ooh, sequel is 42. Like Amores, Amor, Amores Peros. Oh, I love that movie. There's, there's, a, there's an elite group of Mexican directors. It's yeah. Del Toro. It's Del, it's the, yeah. And also Inaratu. the two guys Inaratu. who are in Amor, Amores Peros. Or one of the, the, one of the guys. I mean, they're putting the, everybody to shame with the complexity that's The guys who are in Ichu Mama, Tommy. Yeah, and Cuaron. Yeah, he's the oh, other Alfonso one. Alfonso yeah. Cuaron. Yeah. Who made Gravity. Really oh, that's good. what I was going to say. And yeah. they got the same uh, cinematographer for Birdman. Oh, this is so cool, artsy, like ballsy movie. Just like you know, to, to do it Keaton. all one to, And it's Michael Keaton. The handsome, Keaton. And most talented man I'm ever gonna marry. Oh. <laughs> Thank Keaton. you for marrying him. No you problem. Him. I do it for me and America. Yeah. Why? I mean, we got a poster here up today for White Noise. Why was he doing that? Why wasn't some? Why weren't more he prestige directors picking wants. him up? White Noise was right when I was like, oh, his career, like he's just he's doing subpar. Whatever he did right before this was probably fine. I think he stayed. Okay, after Batman for a yeah. little bit, I think, but uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, he had his uh, Pacific Heights and that kind of stuff for yeah, a while, well, you know. He was great in that. Yeah. And Mr. Mom, he's so great in Mr. Mom. Well, yeah, that's pre right. Batman. That, that, those are great years. Night Shift, Gung Ho, oh, that's Night all Shift. good shit. He was on fire. Yeah. But then it seemed like I, I, I mean, I just wish you, I just wish he's in more if, stuff. If it's people like that, I feel like it's their choice. Like he probably had a lot of stuff come to him, and he was just like, yeah. as yeah. a fan, more Michael Keaton. Even now, with this, puts him back in the spotlight, and we'll most likely get him an Oscar nomination. Still I more Michael Keaton. That's wonderful. And, and to do the whole thing with the subtext of Batman in a super artsy movie, and it's just... Yeah, and someone pointed out all the superhero people that are in the movie. Are we discussing this? Because oh, I'm being Hulk? quiet. Yeah. Oh. Is this the Birdman discussion, or are we doing that later? Oh, uh, you can. All right, go ahead, because I'm... No, I was just going to say Edward, Edward Norton is in it, and he was the Incredible Hulk, and yeah. Emma Stone from the Spider-Man franchise. Nice. Someone pointed that all out, They address too, right so. in it, uh, there's a part where Birdman is watching television... And he talks about how Robert Downey Jr. is now raking in all the bucks doing the Iron Man movies, and he could have been like doing that too. So they address that uh, equate. Yeah, that. it's it's current. It's wasn't of this Zach world, but it's weird. In a movie? He's great in it. No, I know, but wasn't yeah. he also in a? I, oh. Not, I know. I would assume he's great. Oh I no, think he's great in everything. Yeah. But um, wasn't he in? Superhero movie? Like superhero yeah, like movie? a superhero. Like a oh, I don't know. oh you sure. know what? He was a superhero in that TV show, uh, the, the the Brooklyn-centric TV show. Oh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine? Death, something love you to oh, death. Oh, Bored to Death? Bored to Death. He was a oh, superhero? He was a, no, he was a well, he, d- he d- drew a he comic book. Like, 
and I think he dresses up like him in one of the episodes or something. Yeah, he's trying to be like a detective. Well, yeah, Jason Schwartzman was. Oh, Jason. Oh, but his okay. buddy is Zach Alphanakis, who is impregnating lesbians and drawing comic books. That that show is pretty damn kooky. Yeah, I never saw it. Ted Danson's insane in that mo- in that show, too. I it's love Ted Danson. I will oh, watch this show. I know, that. I should yeah, watch yeah. that show. I've heard all about it. He smokes a lot of pot. <laughs> That's what Ted Danson does in that show. <laughs> hey, we got one more film, our final film. Yay! Blood drive. And here we break the record for most movies previewed ever on a movie-based showcast recorded in a studio in Burbank on a Wednesday night with a movie I bet you didn't know was coming out. Heck, we're previewing it and we still don't know it's coming out. But it looks good. It's Kill the Messenger. Lee? Kill the Messenger. Kill the Messenger. I'm going to adapt the show to a Broadway play. I think we've got all the songs down. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Paul, ever wonder why we like crack so much? Well, here's a movie that answers just that question. Was the government aware that you were smuggling tons of cocaine into the United States? Yes, the government knew. The U.S. government sanctioning and profiting from an, the import and sale of an illicit narcotic? This is a true story. Some stories are just too true to tell. Well, of course it is, but I ask you, is it based on a book? Oh. Yeah. The book was inspired by real-life reports that alleged... A link between the 1980s crack cocaine trade in the United States and the CIA-backed Nicaraguan Contras. And that's nothing to sneeze at, because you'd make a mess of all the drugs. National security and crack cocaine, the same sentence. Does that not sound strange to you? I'm sorry, but I'm just having a hard time believing all of this, Paul. Well, remember, it was the 80s. Oh, why didn't you say so? Makes complete sense. Right. And when a story ripped from the headlines, crystallized and smoked... Kill the Messenger tells the story of how one journalist covered the rise of crack jokes by stand-up comedians and the CIA's complicity in the epidemic of crackhead replacing the hobo as America's most referenced underclass member. Two-time Oscar nominee for Not the Born Legacy, Jeremy Renner, who decided not to shave after American Hustle, plays Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist Gary Webb, who got on the bad side of the CIA the same way everybody does, for telling the truth. And on the That Guy scale, Kill the Messenger rates a four, featuring Barry Pepper, that Oliver guy. Platt, that guy. Andy oh, that Garcia, guy. and Tim Blake Nelson. Oh, that guy. Guy. <laughs> if you're a fan of That Guys, as we are, you might be critical of the film for not using David Morse, or Clint Howard, or John Hurd, or Richard Jenkins, or David Paymer. Oh, that guy. Well, I could go on. <laughs> that's Kill the Messenger. And that's the record. That is the record, ladies oh, and gentlemen. Oh, that is the record. Wow. Balloons should be cascading from the ceiling at this moment. But, Having uh, lived through that, now I know why that's never been done before. This is why we don't do six it's movies in a week. How it's many a lot of damn uh, oh, two, two or three. Two or three. Oh, wow. It's a big weekend, yeah. though. Yeah. I mean, even though Birdman's getting a limited release, how can you not talk about that movie? It's like I'm all the fuss now. Tell yeah. us how you saw it. Yeah, all usually right. this show's 20 minutes. Yeah. So, Paul, <laughs> <laughs> that's a never We got happened. you in here for a full hour so, and a half. Kill the messenger and everything, but Birdman, all right. Uh, so, <laughs> here's the thing Paul did one of those screenings for LA Weekly where basically you go and you call in and you get some sort of printout. Yeah, K-Rock's giving away tickets. Stay in this huge, long, ridiculous line hoping that you'll get into the theater. And in, there's been times in the past when we didn't get there quite hours enough ahead of time and we've been turned away right at the cusp. And boy, Paul was close because the guy came out and he said, I don't think everyone's going to get in. And we were still ton away from that guy. And Paul started to get heated. He doesn't get mad about Anything else in the world. People think I'm mad all the time. It's the weirdest thing in the world. But that is one thing I actually get mad about. (laughs) He He is wasting time to leave the house, go where I'm going, (laughs) and not see the movie. Oh, that kills me. He was getting a little hot under the collar. He was getting a little hot. We were uh, like 10 people away from like Born Ultimatum, I think, once. I was 10 people away from (laughs) Bad Lieutenant, Port of Call, New Orleans. (laughs) And I was like, fuck! (laughs) I had no idea that was going to be as horrible as (laughs) I've heard it is. Well... Luckily, we got in, and we actually got to sit together, and we had some pretty good seats, because you never know what you're going to get. And as soon as that movie started, you just have not seen anything like it before. I, I, you said something about the sweeping photo- yeah. uh, video to photography. Oh, whatever. the photography is unbelievable. Okay, oh. yeah. so it's about a guy doing a play, and it's filmed like a play. And I, it took me a while to let go of the thought holy shit, what if the next person messes up their line and they have to redo the entire 20 minutes? Wow. Yeah, they're doing long. It was yeah. so cool. Seven, ten-minute takes. That is it's co- so cool. That's such an artsy director thing to do, to present people who are putting oh. on a play and then having the actors actually do a play. They, I never thought about that. They would have takes. to have been really well rehearsed because it was like that ER episode where the camera just follows everybody. Oh, that was crazy, yeah. yeah. It was so cool. And they're going... 
St. James oh. Theater should be a, uh, a character in this because they go up and down and through the St. James Theater. As I'm saying this, I'm like, wait, please don't tell me anymore. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's I feel cool. like that's going to be like the thing that you watch the movie and you're, you're going to be waiting for it, even though I know I oh I look yeah. up the end of Agatha Christie. Well, I was going to say, haven't you already been well, to Wikipedia for it? Ah. I mean. Well, let, let, me, let me talk about something. That's so funny that, that she good. now doesn't want to know the ending. I that, love that's that. a good I sign. Said, that's <laughs> good. I don't mind knowing the ending. I don't want to know how it's shot. Yeah. So whatever. Okay. The one thing I'll I'll talk about one thing that's persistent throughout the movie. How cool is this score? I've been hearing patches of this oh. score. It's like an improvisational drum Unnerving. Thing. Yeah. It's yeah. just drums. But what's cool is like that's such a great artsy director thing to do. To A, present it like a play, film it like a play, but then when you're you're that that jazz score just has I think lends this liveliness to it because it's improvisational. It's it, really it's like presenting the moments as sort of happening in, in real time, which they are kind of. Yeah. You know. It kind of accentuates things falling apart for this actor yeah. who's trying one last time to get some credibility. Ooh, I want to trying to shake that. the Birdman thing. It's really good. He's and so Ke- funny. Keaton's so great. I love that also that he's sort of like supposed to be kind of crazy, you know, whatever the voice. I always have that voice talking to me, but it's usually like just like. Right? I yeah. always have something like, whoa, oh, you wanted to go to this party. <laughs> yeah. You would too. have met. Yeah. We met him at the same time. We're both in my head. <laughs> that funny? Yeah. 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 I love the uh, the very first image I saw of this was the Birdman on a street uh, walking behind uh, uh, Michael Keaton. And the Birdman looks exactly like the Blue Falcon from Hanna Barbera. <laughs> right. It was Blue Falcon and uh, the dog Dino Mutt. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I loved that cartoon as a kid, and I, I was like, oh my god, they, uh, I just hadn't heard about it. I'm like, oh my god, they made a Blue Falcon movie. Like, because anything can come true if you're a superhero fan now. Like, yeah. they're doing, you know, uh, Iron Fist TV shows, and there's a, there's a Flash TV show and a Batman TV show at the same time. So anything can happen. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, they made a Blue Falcon movie, but they didn't. They anyway, did. he looks just like the Blue Falcon, though. <laughs> um, this movie uh, introduced Emma Stone to me, apparently. I oh, you didn't know her before. Didn't know I liked her in Magic in the Moonlight. I, she's I adorable. Did. Yeah. She's really good in this. <laughs> and um, Edward Norton, I haven't seen him in a while, and wow, he's fantastic. He's, would I be out of line? Would I be out, out of line if, if I actually wanted to talk about the messenger? Oh. Kill the messenger. <laughs> kill the messenger. <laughs> no, no, no. What do you got? <laughs> no, I actually wanted to see this this movie. Kill the messenger. Yeah, kill the messenger. Yeah. It's oh yeah. Fantastic. It reminds me of the uh, a- documentary that Adam showed me called Cocaine Cowboys, which I thought this was going to be based on, but apparently this is more about no. Noriega and the Contras and all that other stuff. Have, have you seen Cocaine Cowboys? I haven't. It's an amazing documentary. It's on Netflix. And right that's now. as much the Kill the Messengers we're going to talk. Yeah, yeah, you guys. That's see it. it. Or on the. Co- you want to co- see it? <laughs> <laughs> it'll, it'll suck you. No, right but we're in. already on to Cocaine I mean, Cowboys. Also, the Kill the Messenger though. That's such a. It's such a interesting time for this movie to come out. Mm-hmm. In oh, terms yeah. of like how what you know transparency of journalism and. Mm-hmm. This is back when government. Yeah, I saw the trailer and I said, "Bob, Jeremy Renner fits right in with the '70s. It's the '90s. Uh. <laughs> it takes place in the '90s, talking about the '80s, yeah. flashing back to uncovering stuff from the '80s, nefarious. Well, I mean, you know, I, when I when the movie JFK came out, I went, "Sure, why not?" I watched that movie. Yeah, I mean, what am I gonna? Like, it's not like the government's been winning back my trust since I know, 1963. Right? They do nothing. They do nothing you know? to win back your trust except for go on TV and go, "Oh, you people are such assholes." Yeah, like thinking we're all being evil. How dare you? Yeah, and <laughs> it was at 91 JFK, so we'd just come off like you know all these Iran Contra stuff and the uh, the yeah the um, savings and loan scandals and all sorts of other bullshit. I'm like, sure, but I believe these theories as much as any other. So yeah. now when a movie presents these, I'm like, yeah, sure. Yeah, I know, right? Why not? Any of the worst things you think could probably, probably be true. Probably true. They, they don't do a good job of not being a jerk a lot of the time. And we all know <laughs> the drug war is bullshit. It just yeah. is. Yeah. Well, there's a great line in the trailer. Profits he says, uh, are you one of those conspiracy theory guys? He's like, well, I believe in conspiracies. It doesn't mean it's theoretical. <laughs> <laughs> People are conspiring. <laughs> yes, right. All right, let's get to uh, some quality time here with Laura. We talked Yay. about her already. A Second City alum, Emmy-winning writer, has worked with uh, the likes of Crossballs and, cross and the Colbert oh. Report. It's Laura Kraft, everybody. There you go. If there's anything that needed uh, spoofing, and it can't spoof it enough, it's, it's uh, that's one of the reasons we cut the cord on cable. It's 24-hour news and shows like Crossfire, which that show ripped. Yeah, Crossballs was half hardball, half Crossfire. Yeah. That's that was a great show. It was only one season, but yeah. it was wonderful. That's Matt Besser's genius. Uh, Chris Tallman, uh, right, Chris was your host. Chris was the host, and Charlie Siskel. I, it was Matt Besser's idea. Matt Besser's so smart. He just comes up with so many interesting things. 
and it was half improvised. It was sort of like the Phil Hendry show, but live. It was oh my god! The Phil Hendry so people show. would come on and talk about their talking points, and then improvisers would talk. But the people didn't know in the studio. <laughs> oh, so like the writers would go up and pitch jokes to like the improvisers, but I would act like a producer. So it would look like I was just going up in segment producing him uh. or her, whomever this Brooks person was, and then. Really, it was like, so if somebody would come on, there was one that was never aired that was about gun control, and there was like a, you know, a pro-gun person came on, and, you know, and then Horatio and Jerry came on and like, <laughs> argued against it, but like arguing like with ridiculous things, like, I agree, you know, there shouldn't be gun control, and, and we should also all kill each other with rocks, and like, you know, and just, the people, you could see the people getting like really flustered and just sticking to their talking points. It was great. I've always enjoyed that about the Phil Hendry show, like when someone would get on there, he, well, he would play a character where... Convinced the greatest country star of all time is Sheryl Crow. Yeah. And then people would call, what? No, it's Merle Haggard or Johnny Cash. Or da, da, da. And he would just stick by that principle. And I know that Makes like, for great comedy. Yeah, it was great. It was and people so call in all pissed off. Yeah. Well, he knew how to get the gun. I mean, it's really, it's like, I feel like there's some people that go on these shows to say the worst thing to just get the goat of people. Like, some people just love annoying a uh, liberal or a conservative. And they're just saying that, like, whatever pisses them off. Like the Phil Hendry was such a master of that, yeah. you know, of just like taking that opinion, knowing exactly who's going to get pissed off and what they're going to call and say. And sure enough, it comes down. Yep. I think you always say his Spanish. <laughs> just people would get so pissed at that. Um, did you know Stephen Colbert back in Chicago? I did not. Uh, my first day at Second City, um, I, one of my first jobs was understudying because everyone was at his wedding. And he got married, and then he left. So I, I've never had met him before. I worked at Colbert. Yeah, we and got he was in New York, and I was in L.A. So I never met him until the first day. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we got we got there right when uh, he and Carell were just about leaving Chicago yeah. and wrapping up their shows and yeah. taking off. That's when I was there. Yeah. Cool. What, what show were you in at Second City? Oh. An ETC show? Do you remember? Yes, I was in ETC shows. I was saying earlier, I have a terrible memory. I, I understudied. Um, for a year and a half or a year or something like that. Um, and when I was understudying Paul Dinello and Corral and Fran Adams and Ruthie Rudnick and Colbert was already gone. Um, maybe Rizowski, I can't remember who was in Is that old wine and new bottles? I think so. Yeah. And it was, and then the next show was like Pinata Full of Bees. Like yeah. kind of everyone left and then they brought in a bunch of, um, sort of other, just people I had come up with, um, from Improv Olympic. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, and I was, in, and then I was moved into ETC, and I was in a cast with Brian Stack and Miriam Tolan and Neil Flynn and uh, Jerry Miner and Jim Zulovic, and I, I'm mixing all the cast together. But I did three shows. I did, I stepped into Farewell My CompuServe, Serve, which um, I took over for D Ryan, and because um, she had a baby oh, and yeah, left, yeah. and then I we did a show called Forty Ounces and a Mule, and yeah, that was yeah. uh, with Jerry and Horatio and. Neil, Miriam, Brian, and I. And then the next show is River Ants. And that was, uh, River Ants was me and Telerico, Rich Tellerico and Rebecca Sohn, Rachel Hamilton, Jerry Minor, Matt Dwyer. Those are great names. Yeah. Yeah. All, all funny, 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 funny across the board. I might be wrong about Jerry Minor. I think he was in that show. Yeah. yeah. Really great. No, we've seen him in ETC in something. Yeah. So yeah, he did a bunch of stuff there. No, yeah, no, I, did, I know he did, but I can't remember if he was in River Ants. I've been seeing him River pop up a lot more. Jim on TV. Zulvik might have been. The late great Jim Zulvik. Yes, yes. yes. I, I remember watching Junebug and Jerry Minor was there. Yeah, because Phil I just Morrison went, directed that. Isn't that funny? Phil Morrison directed a lot of UCB. He directed the UCB TV show. So okay. He, um, oh, yeah? Yeah, he's a great director. I love I'm that movie. Of his and I don't know enough about him or, or oh, what else he's, he's done. He, he just had a movie that came out this last year that didn't make a big splash, and it was great. It should have made a bigger splash. I'm trying to think of the name of it. It was about the holidays. And and then he did Junebug. He hasn't done like a ton of movies. I I would love it if he did a ton more. Yeah, I think Junebug is fantastic. It's so good. Yeah. Now I I have to ask you about the Colbert Report because uh, that that uh, has always been since it very first started one of the tightest fat like the jokes per minute. If you were to to clock them, I think that beats almost any show. It was just like the, there was not a sentence that exits his mouth that does that doesn't have two or three jokes built into the, the phraseology of it. Uh, what, what is it like writing for a show that clearly has like such an editorial capacity to just need to hit more jokes, more jo- I mean, it's just it's packed. A lot of jokes. So impressive. It's kind of funny because after I left that show, sort of when you're writing, you'd sort of like realize it's like every two lines you do a joke. Basically. Yeah. Not, I mean, there was no rule of thumb, but um, 
it just the next thing I went and worked even the next script I did after I left that show I remember sending it in to um, somebody to read and give me notes and they were like there's a lot of jokes in that because you know with scripts like you need to have the story happen and the characters have to be characters like it can't just be like joke 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 for like yeah, three, yeah. two pages when you do a narrative yeah but whereas on Colbert it's like it's no just, that's you get encouraged so, you get so yeah. reflexive to be like blah blah joke blah blah you know yeah exactly like yeah. yeah everything is crafted with the joke into it you don't just talk about a person you say joke person and then you know into the anyway. and one of your more recent jobs was working on the crazy ones on I did. CBS I was on the crazy yeah. ones uh, for CBS last year it was a really it was my the first time I'd ever worked on a network sitcom which was really fun. Um, free lunches. Oh, nice. I, I kind of only worked in cable where you always pay for your lunches. Yeah. But then the show after that, I worked on a show right after the crazy ones uh, with Billy Crystal that they're filming right now called The Comedians. It's going to be on FX. Free lunches. Oh, nice. But then a Comedy Central show paid for lunches. It's a good yeah. gig. Oh. That's kind of how I think now, now that's smarter. We did the same thing. We used to work for Disney. Free lunches. Yeah. We visited the DreamWorks, DreamWorks animation free studios. Free lunches. And as guests. They gave us free lunches. Free lunches. Oh. It's the best. At the, at the comedians, there was a big thing because they we were going over our budget for lunches, and they were like, sorry, guys, 15 bucks is too much. So $12. We were like, 12 and the Other people were like, $12. I was like, free lunches. Like, yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, anyway, so the, the crazy ones was wonderful. I had never, I mean, to be perfectly sort of brutally honest, I went into a not a huge Robin Williams fan. Um, just not, I mean, I don't know why, I just hadn't, and I left there such a big fan. He was a wonderful guy. I mean, it was like a joke with friends of mine because I would rhapsodize about him. He was just a great, he was a true artist and, and just so um, such an ama- I mean, the reason that when he passed away it was such a sad si- situation anyway, but um Every, you know how like you would listen to everybody would say like, oh, I met him once and he was amazing. I met him once and he was great. And you, if you didn't, if you'd never met him, you'd sort of maybe think it was overkill or just people being, you know, jumping onto the tragedy train and kind of claiming it as their own. But really, he was really a great guy. Like I've, I've never really met somebody that wonderful. So nice and thoughtful. And like after he would read your, like you would, you'd be on set for like your episode or whatever. And he'd come up, thank you so much for those jokes. They were so great. I love this script. Is there anything? Am I doing okay? Is there anything you wanted me to change? Like he was just like room, room for improv that he's kind of famous for. Um, yeah, though he actually, um, you know, he's a Juilliard actor. I think for, was a Juilliard actor, sort of first and foremost. He he improvised, but he really just like after the several takes of have getting what you've written, and he's very funny and smart. Yeah, just a came from truth most yeah. of the time and you can see that what pain was there too yeah. which can bring about some of the greatest comedy i think and also i think that's what made him like um i always sort of in my head i think of comedians as sort of like humanists non-humanists artists non-artists and like i think of him as like a humanist artist like he he was like in comedy because he really loved other human beings and he loved sort of celebrating people and then uh just very you know just an artist like he'd been through the mill he, he to the point you know, he kept performing. I kind of think of comedy as like a muscle. You have to keep, keep fresh and keep working out. And that's why I like to perform and stuff a lot. Um, he was always like, I met, I improvised with him. I did a stand-up bill with him. Like he, but not like where I was like performing with Robin. It was just he like came and sat in on these small stages um, shows. I did a show at UCB in New York. He was in it. And yeah, he showed up at I.O. once. I.O. And did uh, Armando or something. Armando. And he showed up at Nerd Melt that's one night, cool. did a set. He's uh, just such sunset. a great guy. Yeah. You don't see a lot of big movie stars doing that. No. You know, ever. And he just he loved meeting new comedy people, and he loved doing bits. He was great. There's such a history in him because that whole rise of stand up, and how the the very all the all the big stand ups of the of that rise in the 80s, you know, in the comedy boom, and then they all gravitated to TV. He was one of the first, obviously, Mork and Mindy. And then, you know, all the way through, like, Seinfeld, that was that big... So he was a part of that, that rise of stand-up movement and the stand-up club, and then the, the, the rise of the stand-ups in sitcoms, and then this full transition in Hollywood, like, because he became this huge 90s star, and he'd been in movies for a long time, but, like, there was this sort of huge transition in movies. I mean, it was just such part, of, part of so many iconic moments in comedy history. That yeah. like to have him sit in at a UCB, which is oh. like n- a new comedy mm-hmm. thing for most people. Uh, this room knows a little bit more about UCB, but but you know like to so it's just so interesting or to see him at I O in in Los Angeles, which is like a new thing too. It's like yeah. he just spanned all these. This area. Yeah, he could probably met John Lennon. 
and yeah. and, and met, met Sarah Michelle Gellar. So, you know, I mean, <laughs> you know, there's boom. He was there the night that Belushi OD'd. Well, he was right. there earlier in the night. That's right. He had left. I mean, yeah. Geez. Not to bring it down. I'm just saying he was there during <laughs> all the important comedic Finally, We finally came back from the concentration camp. Oh. And now we're back. I'm just saying, he had a way of knowing where to be. How dare you bring down the conversation about this guy that killed himself. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Laura, let's talk about, uh, because we ask this of every guest, what's your favorite movie of all time? All About Eve. Oh. 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 One of the best movies ever written, ever acted, ever oh. anything. I love I, that movie. I think about it all the time. I love anything George Sanders. I love George How Sanders. How cool is he? I was talking to a, a friend of mine about that movie because they said, oh, you know, because especially working in Hollywood and being an actor for a long time and, you know, just that storyline is just, it's basically like a Campbellian sort of story of like what it's like to be an actor. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know if Campbellian's a word, Joseph Campbell. Sure. <laughs> Joseph Campbell, probably not yeah, a word. Campbell. 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 But um, I always, in that movie, people said like, who did, you know, did you think of yourself sort of as... Betty Davis, I was like, I always thought of myself as George Sanders. Like, that's the person I wanted to be was just sort of like the acid-tongued, you know, very witty, dry. He's so great in that movie. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a while since I saw it, but this is this is the, that's the, Betty Davis, right? And, Betty and Davis. it's her big comeback in the movie, right? She's doing no, the comeback? Is no, that the one? she's oh, a, so. an actress who's like, um, she's a theater, a theater actress, and she's maybe 40, and she's sort of been a, like a very famous actress for a long time. And she's uh, dating a director who's very successful. She's in this little, and Celeste Holm, and ah, I can't think of the man who plays the uh, playwright, are sort of their best friends. And she's doing, she's very successful. And Celeste Holmes meets like this little like backstage fangirl, played by Ann Baxter, and takes pity on her, brings her in to meet the great Margot Channing, who's Betty Davis's character. And the and the woman just sort of instant uh, insinuates herself into Betty Davis's life oh, and tries right. to take over yes. and push her out and then take her position as like the queen of the theater. So she does it first. She's just like um, like a fan, and then Betty Davis is like, oh, you can come and sort of be my assistant. She is, and then and uh, her maid, played by the very great Thelma Ritter, uh, is just she's like at one point Betty Davis is like uh, Margot Channing is like, you don't like Eve, do you? And um, Thelma Ritter's, Thelma Ritter's character is like, no, it's like she's studying you or something. And she just has, she's just this very like streetwise maid who sort of sees Ann Baxter's character of who, who she is. And um, and then I, don't, I kind of don't even want to keep going because it's so <laughs> great. Okay. But George Sanders plays a reviewer, sort of the king of the theater. And not and for nothing, Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe makes her debut and she's yeah. fantastic in it. It's just so so good. I might be a movie jail on that one. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm getting that. the it's feeling I haven't seen much of that movie. That <laughs> is a, a no. really good movie. And I might That's be confusing the, uh, with Sunset Boulevard or not something like that. <laughs> Sunset Boulevard is also a really great movie. Oh, Sunset Boulevard is a great movie. But I think All About Eve falls into that category of movies I might have seen too young. I've seen it, but it yeah. deserves oh, yeah. a review. Like so. Chinatown. kind of. As an adult, you can see it from different eyes. you got to see it again. Yeah, that I think. movie is like one of those, like if you live in New York, watch it movies. Like You know how like here, like Double Indemnity, Sunset yeah. Boulevard, mm-hmm. different movies where if you live here, you're like, oh, remember what all those feelings was different back then or uh-huh. whatever. <laughs> I feel like that's a New York like if you live in New York, Rockford. <laughs> no, I feel that. Grand like Canyon. <laughs> Big Lebowski is yeah. such an LA oh. movie. There so are LA. so many things to the subtext of that movie that are purely living in Los Angeles. That if you don't live in that neighborhood where he goes door to door to tell everyone he's a pedophile, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've lived in that neighborhood. I mean, we know what those houses look like or on the inside. Or even swingers. Yeah. To know that you oh, don't yeah. want to date somebody with a eight one eight area code. No, the, the right? apartment in swingers. Right? I've had twelve of those. Yeah. yeah. I've lived in that twelve different times. Yeah. Absolutely. The caravan of cars going yeah. from place yes, to place. Yes. You're not going to drive separately, and you can't get in a fight because you have an audition in the morning. There you go. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Right? Yeah. yeah. Funnier once you live here. <laughs> I, you know, I thought Ralph's in Lebowski when we saw it in Chicago. I thought that was a joke store. I thought, what a hilarious name for a store. It still is a hilarious name for a store, but when I moved Ralph. here, I was like, oh, that's not a joke at all. That's the place. It, and that's how L.A. that movie is. It's yeah. like, there's Ralph's. And it there's doesn't even have an apostrophe in it. Yeah. It's not a it's grocery store Ralph's. owned by Ralph's. It's a place to go to buy a Ralph. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's weird. All right. Well, hey, we don't, may not have so much time for what did you see this week. We may have to get to that uh, next week. But there's loads to see. Unless you want to say a few words about St. Vincent. St. Vincent was really good. Ooh. Oh. I really liked it. Yep. Stephen Lewis saw it and said he thought you'd like it. I did like it. He uh, was I right. I heard, he Karen, smart. Melissa McCarthy's looking a little chubby in this. Uh, <laughs> other than the fact that she was chubby. Okay. She's brilliant in this. Yeah, she's really good. Everybody's really good. The little kid actor. 
Fantastic. Yeah, Melissa McCarthy brings a heart in this one, which she's is nice. So you know, she's good. often called on to be super so goofy. funny though. Super. Oh yeah, very funny. but she's got a lot of heart in Gilmore Girls. You could tell she's a very hearty person. No, I never saw that. Oh, she's great she's in Gilmore, Gilmore Girls. Girls. Yeah, she's that's like launched her. She played oh. um the chef at the inn that is owned by Lorelai Gilmore. Yeah. And we can go back to the innkeeper comes out <laughs> and says, what are these girls doing with you? Enough of that ruckus upstairs. <laughs> ruckus. Sit on the Davenport. <laughs> All right, well, enough of that. Uh, let's get to the grand finale. Uh-oh. Karen's uh, weekly look at the birthdays of those who make the movies. Karen's birthdays. Take it away. Now you're going to learn something. More, huh? You didn't know you'd be learning oh, things. Feel free got. to chime in. Uh, first of all, I didn't write down a lot of information on this, but I was doing my birthday research, and it's Matt Walsh's birthday today. Oh, hey, Matt Walsh. Matt Walsh. All right, just throwing Friend that out the there for you. Uh, I didn't find a lot of info on him. So yay, Ma- Matt Walsh. Okay. UCB. Yes, UCB. There we go. We start off our week of birthdays by wishing a happy birthday to the very talented Norm MacDonald, who turns 40. Norm. 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 Uh, uh, he's, he's 40, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that seems like an age. Had to be. <laughs> he's forty. He can't just. Be he's 20. not forty. See, I was There's gonna no bring that 40. up. There's I no looked way. on two different no, sites. No, no, no. He's and 50. They, I think he said on his podcast I, he turned fifty. Right. Oh, so this okay. one obviously was wrong. Yeah, I looked he's at got to be. That sounds like how old he is. Yeah. I that's, love how we're all irritated. Forty's too by young. His age. Him. <laughs> he can play Thank anywhere. You. That's, my, that's from, my Norm Macdonald. I just came up with it right now. Norm could play anywhere from the Improv on Melrose Avenue to the Improv in Sandusky, Ohio. He just can't drive there. Do you guys know that he doesn't Ruh-roh. drive? Ruh-roh. He does not drive. I do. Friend of the show, Michael Gelbart, when he opened for yeah, Norm. Drive him where he needs drive. to go. Does not so, or cannot. He doesn't. Okay. I don't think he has a license. It's well, kind of fascinating. And he's Canadian. Because right oh. up there with Barbara Walters <laughs> doesn't drive either. That's good company. If I, I didn't have to, I wouldn't. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I don't right now. You don't. You I'm don't drive car. either. I refuse to get a car now. Perfect. But anyway, I guess I'm kind of like that. We all remember Norm from Weekend Update on SNL, and I, of course, love the Norm show. I even went and saw it taped. Absolutely loved it. But. Wait, can know, I just yes. chime in about that real quick? Because sure. I quote him all the time. Yes. Uh, one day he was doing Weekend Update, and he said something, and spittle or something came out of his mouth, and he went, the fuck was that? And then he looked up, and he realized, I'm on live television. And he went, <laughs> My farewell performance. <laughs> <laughs> he went on to the next bit. No, never, no one ever did anything about it. Never got oh, fired or anything. Terrible. But I, my farewell performance. Anytime I fuck up on anything, I've never my farewell, farewell performance. I've never seen it. So the cadence I can only give to, I believe, Artie Lang told the story about Norm Macdonald when he went back to Saturday Night Live. So they tossed him off of Saturday Night Live, and then he went back and then just proceeded to make fun of it in his monologue. And remember, th- a thing I remember him saying is like, "No, they're gonna they're gonna bring out a bunch of the, these people, and they're gonna be uh, yeah, do it. Th- well, hey, you'll see, you'll see." Like it, was, it just blew it off. Like, yeah, it's just gonna it's gonna be terrible. You'll see. <laughs> Well, I have a fun game I want you guys to play with me. It's which movie was Norm actually in? So I'm going to give you two movie titles. Many, right? And then you tell me. I know. I thought that too. You'll have to go to his IMDb. Oh. It's amazing. So I'll give you the two titles. It's going to be one or the other. Vampire Dog or Deuce Bigelow European Gigolo? Got to be Deuce Bigelow. Adam? Uh, I'm going with Deuce Bigelow because they're friends, right? Okay, so he was in both of those movies. Oh, uh, vampire, right. trick question. So, vampire Dog? I am not wrong. You are both right. Did he play Vampire Dog? I don't think he played Vampire Dog. I didn't have that much time. Now, this was a hard one. Dr. Doolittle or Dr. Doolittle 3? Uh, the first one. I'm going to go with the first one. But he was in the first I one. I think he was more popular. The animals? He was a voice of the animals? He's a great oh, voice for that. Yeah. yeah. He's a dog voice. Yeah, he was in both of those. He was a dog voice. <laughs> he, he was, was in, the dog yeah, voice. So he was. Just, uh, yeah, woof. Some, sniffing some butts over here. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. I sense a trend in her yeah. questions. Yeah. Well, it's going to change. Hit us with the third one. Go ahead. The People versus Larry Flint or Billy Madison? Both of them. Can you believe he's in The People versus Larry? He's in The Larry? Really? He's a reporter. Ooh. It's one of his first movies. You zigged at the right when I thought you were going to zag. No. Oh. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I thought a zag was coming. All right, but here we go. Grown Ups or Jack and Jill? He's a zag He's a zag Both of them. Grown Ups or Jack and Jill? Well, I'm going to say both Both of them. No. No? Yeah. It was a oh, he's an argument. Nah. <laughs> she keeps right, zigging. She keeps next. zigging. I just couldn't get over how many movies he was in that we, what? Yeah. Why would he be, what? <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. I'll take that career. Yeah. Yeah, more of a TV guy. Time. More of a TV guy. I do love his podcast, though. Oh, my God. His so podcast is so funny. funny. I can't handle it. Is he back doing that? Yes. He, was he doing did for the summer. summer. He's on another hiatus. But the last one was just sort of out of nowhere. He's suddenly, no more shows. Yeah. This one is an announced hiatus, so I hope to God he comes Speaking back. Speaking of a guy hilarious. who chubbed up, the very first of his podcast shows, he was uh, pretty yeah. hefty. I don't know yeah. if he lost Just find the one with him and Saget. It's the filthiest, greatest thing you ever heard in your life. Yeah. And 
Next up, let's wish a happy birthday to the great John Favreau, who turns 48, but can play anywhere from being money to being in the money. When Talk I, about fat. <laughs> how can anyone Depends possibly on the movie. put him in a movie? When I first learned about John, he was a lovable loser in Swingers, and now he has this huge success as a director. Being that he hasn't directed a film that has you know, my kind of qualifications, like Bill Murray in it, or Colin Firth or Sandra Bullock, I hadn't paid much attention to him until recently. But now I hope that John's listening, because I want to say thank you, John, for a couple of things. I would like to take this moment to speak directly to John Favreau and say thank you, John Favreau. Thank you, John Favreau, for Iron Man and Iron Man 2. Thank you, John Favreau, for Robert Downey Jr. Mm -hmm. I almost forgot all about him, but you didn't, and I thank you for that. Thank you, John Favreau, for Vince Vaughn. I absolutely love Vince Vaughn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And finally, thank you, John Favreau. Mm -hmm. Thank you for finally working with Bill Murray Mm -hmm. and directing him in the... Uh, what is that? The uh, Jungle Book is coming out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ah, yes. Yes. Now my whole world is complete. Bill Murray Thank will voice that. Baloo in mm-hmm. the Jungle Book movie. And hopefully he'll sing. I don't know. He'll be doing Christmas carols in something uh, yeah, this so, so. Christmas time. I believe that it's directed by Sofia Coppola. Yeah. Is that this a could, Christmas you, you special a of, directed a by her? A TV special, yeah, I you think. You're going to get a lot of Bill Murray. Bill, Bill Murray, Murray Christmas special? That's fantastic. Singing That's carols the way he does. Sure. Why not? You think Bill Murray thinks Scrooge, do you think Christmas, right? Sure. Sure. Put and a little finally, love in your heart. He's got to sing. Away <laughs> in a major. <laughs> yeah. I hope he's in a shower when he does it. Let's wish a happy birthday to the stupid funny Trey Parker who turns 45 but can play anywhere from a television bad boy to Broadway baby. He met Matt Stone. Now, this is kind of fun. I wonder if any of you have seen this. In um, Matt Stone, the co-creator of South Park, while he was at University of Colorado. But then he went to UCB and he wrote Cannibal the Musical. Did any of you ever see that? I saw a videotape of Cannibal the Musical. I saw Cannibal the Musical. It was Spadoinkle. <laughs> I saw the movie. That's not, U- not UCB. That's where they started doing it together. Oh, I thought they did. I thought that was Troma. Sure, that isn't the University of Colorado Boulder? Oh, that could be. <laughs> uh, maybe. <laughs> I think that could be. I think it is. I'm uh, such a UCB person. <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh, they actually, please tell me that was the mistake you made. Sure it was. It, it was. That's hysterical. I assume oh. they met at a comedy theater. Why wouldn't I they? I think UCB at that time might have been Matt Walsh's living room. Right? It was <laughs> It was in an alley behind I.O. <laughs> they took, they took uh, Cannibal to that's Troma hysterical. Dance oh, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, Sunday wouldn't take it and they broadcast it I think on the side of a building just so it would get seen and those guys have always had a talent for a musical I mean Cannibal yeah. is a wonderfully absurd trauma movie but it's a workable musical yeah, with absolutely. like real songs and a real thing it's, it's taken to stage now too be, you know yeah. yeah and on that note one of my favorite movie musicals of all time was the South Park movie uh, yeah was that was a musical too bigger, that's larger, one of the greatest bigger larger a longer and uncut so Lee you know how much I love when celebrities sing, or at least write music for people to sing. It's true. People ask me, "Can you tell me two interesting things about Karen?" First, she likes to wear her socks inside out. I don't Absolutely, know. softer and that way. And loves to hear celebrities sing. I do. So I decided we should listen to a little. What would Brian Bortano do? Because I love that. What one. would Brian Bortano do if he was here right now? We, we should all live our life this way. That's what Brian Bortano do. What a great Brian reference Bortano this was at that time. And Just a strange uh, Olympics reference from like eight years prior. <laughs> yeah. And I heard that he embraced it. Brian Boitano was oh, super yeah. cool about yeah. it. Yeah. That yeah. helps. Well, nobody was talking about Brian Boitano <laughs> at this time. It's, uh... I mean, there was so much great stuff in South Park, Bigger, Longer, yeah. and Uncut. They spoof Disney. They spoof Schoolhouse Rock. They spoof... Les Mis. Les Mis. Everything. It's so good. Do you remember the original title of South Park, Bigger, Longer, Uncut? It had an original title and it I was dirty, and they yeah. said you can't call. And I can't remember. This is still dirty. Is, I, well, that, that's the thing. Uncut. That's the thing. They said, okay, we'll change the title. They changed it to bigger, longer, <laughs> uncut, and they're like, that's good. <laughs> like that went over the. Yeah. They said they said they think that was dirtier than the. And I forget what the original title was, but anyway. Oh, that's awesome. It was it was originally too hard for TV or too hard for. Too hard. Too hard and throbbing. Too hard and throbbing. Oh, I'll go bigger, longer, uncut. <laughs> And that wraps into the movie showcast, everybody. But before we do, let's it go was to the a uh, marathon. After let's all. go to the uh, tote board here and get oh. a final uh, uh, donation count. Let's see what we have: five hundred and twenty thousand oh. dollars. Everyone, we have range. That's it. No more podcasts. Wait a minute. Talk this. Well, it's all Bitcoin. So oh. we'll see what happens. But we'll take it, I suppose. This is very emotional. I uh, want to thank everyone who called in. Those lucky when folks. You walk through a storm. Those lucky folks who got to talk to. You. Jet Evelith. Jet, oh, and, uh, oh, thanks, Jet. Thanks, Jet. Yeah. Craig Kukowski. 
Matt Craig, thank you. Matt Craig, man on the phones. Matt Craig, dab your forehead. Yeah. <laughs> Dave Maddie. They have no idea. Famous sweater. Famous sweater. <laughs> Uh, listen, follow us on Twitter at the Movie Guys on Facebook.com slash the Movie Guys. Original title, uh, South Park, All Hell Breaks Loose. Oh, yeah? That's two. That's, kids can't see the word hell. Change it. Bigger, longer, uncut. uncut. <laughs> <laughs> um, follow us on YouTube as well iTunes, SoundCloud, Vine, Instagram, LinkedIn. And thanks to Laura Kraft. Hey! Thank you for Thank having you. me. Oh, what a, what, a lovely time. What, a, what shall we plug? What's coming up? Nothing. No? Wait a second. You said you were supposed to be writing a script right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, uh, I worked a- on The Comedians for FX. That's coming out um, probably spring of 2015. Cool. Another period for Comedy Central. Um, I don't know. Are you on the social media thing? Can people find you uh, Oh, online? yeah. I'm on Twitter. I'm not a huge presence. I mostly read and talk about, like, I had a lot of grapes today. It's, you're <laughs> going to want to... Then you're doing it right. At Pretty Laura. <laughs> yeah. Hear about what I've eaten that day. Um, I don't know. Facebook, Instagram. Right. Well, we'll at Pretty Laura. There it is. Um, thanks to Steve Schultz as well for uh, writing contributions to the show every week. And remember, you can find everything we're up to at themovieguys.net. We'll be back next week with three new films, including a new Bill Murray movie. Yay. We'll give it the full preview treatment and talk all about it. Uh, so it's bound to get weird in here. We'll see you then. With hope in your heart. And we did it! We did it! Confetti. Where's the confetti? We did it. They said we couldn't. We did.